remember, bourbon makes it better. Get something in your freaking glass, baby. We're back. Mm -mm. Please bring the energy. Can you hear me? I try one little thing. At least we have the freaking chat box in here. We got the chat box. It looks better. It sounds better. Oh, okay. Let's go. Give me something. What do we got? What do we got? We got, come on, get, where have we got? Something needs to die. We don't got nothing near in depth, huh? Something needs to die. This is dying. Cheers. Welcome to Friday Night Shenanigans. It's freaking good. Good to see you guys. Rest in peace. And look, I can do this too if I want to get serious. What's up, Vaderade? Let's freaking go. Welcome to the club, baby. This is how we get into extra innings. What's up, Jabber Jaws? Good to see ya. Let's pop this sucker out because I want to be able to. I want to be able to see ya. What's up, David Smith? Let's freaking go, baby. Good to see ya, guys. Thanks for tuning back in. Thanks for showing back up. What's up, Travis Melvin? The new 18-year-old Orphan Barrel Indigo Hour worth the 220 at 90 proof. Travis. <clears throat> two things. One, there's no way I don't get access to a lot of new stuff. And the new stuff I do is because of I got friends in low places. You know what I'm saying? Two, someone out there have the new Orphan Barrel? I haven't even heard of that. So now I'm interested, Travis. 18 years old, 90 proofer at 220 bucks. What are they normally priced at? I don't think they're 220, but I also don't think they're 18. So I don't know. What's up, Richie Z? All right, what do I pour? I'm gonna pour a little bit of this Lucky Seven Holiday to host. Never tried this. I've literally. The I've only tried the Lucky 7 Proprietor 14. Jason C. says it's not worth it. There we go. That's all you need right there. You want to trust a dude's palate over mine is Jason C. Otherwise, I'm not going to give you I'm, all my notes. Dude. I'm just going to tell you what I think of it. I'm going to make up some stuff. I'm going to say this and that and that. Which I get. But... Not that good. But I'm going to tell you what I think. I'm going to tell you what you need to know. And that's all you need to know. 
let's do um let me pull this up do you guys like this little chat right here it goes away too quickly so i can change that hide messages after always show messages <laughs> lag Did we get lag? Oh, shoot. Not the lag. <laughs> we got the lag. <laughs> Maybe it is the internet. I think it might be the internet. Hold on, hold on. Let me get rid of some of this stuff. Here we go. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Don't worry, everyone. It's going to be one of those nights. Stream status is poor. Might have too much stuff up. Let's exit that. with that don't worry guys don't worry don't worry don't worry don't worry don't worry I'm gonna disappear the stream will not end but I'm gonna change a setting and then we're gonna be set all right you might even still be able to hear me actually I don't think you will We back, we back, we back, we back, we back. Hello, hello, hello. It's gonna be one of those nights, friends. It's gonna be one of those nights. I think we're back, excellent. If we drink enough, it won't matter. I can't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I will say my internet's been slow the past couple of days. It's been super freaking windy. Oh my god, you know what it freaking is? The gosh dang eclipse. The supposedly like millions of people have showed up in the state. And I'm telling you, I've noticed my phone has been slow since yes, so yesterday, Thursday, math. Um it's been I've noticed a kind of a fog. It's also been super windy. I thought it was the wind until the eclipse. I think that's what it is. Let's save those settings. Then when the chat pops back up, we're good. I think we're good. We're good, friends. This is why I love you, because you guys just stick around for all the bull crap. Do you like it better when I look this way or this way? Just good old me. What's up, brother? David Smith looks good to me. Andretsky, Miss Wrench Sabotage. She's actually not even home. Hear me now? Freaking Friday, I'm drinking wild freaking turkey, Kentucky freaking spirit, and I've got a freaking Florida freaking tan. Let's go. What's up, Tim Terrell? You missed all the shenanigans. So, <laughs> we're here. Hey, we got this sick chat. Do you guys like the chat? Might be a little intrusive. leave that there. I don't know why it changed to green, too. <laughs> Tim Coronet! As long as you're looking at me. Trev, did you get your eclipse glasses? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so where I live, I'm not going to tell you exactly where I live, because 
fillers are out there. Um, we are in the direct path. So we're going to be right out there, and it's, it just happens. We don't have to go anywhere. But it's mass pandemonium. It's mass chaos around here. I went to Sam's Club yesterday to stop. They were like, hey, the, the police department was like, hey, you guys need to stock up on freaking toilet paper, water, like basically treat this like a, a an ice storm. Yeah, we can get rid of the chat. Um, what was I saying? Ice. The amount of people that are coming here, the grocery stores don't have enough stuff for the influx of people. Um, so when it sells out, if it sells out, they can't replenish it in time. Um... I think we're still under partly cloudy. I think I think we'll be good. I have faith. I have faith. People are nuts here in MA prepping for the snow and now a 93% eclipse. Makes no sense. Tim Cordonet trip. Italy looked awesome. Miss Wrench coming on tonight. Um no, but I think I think I can definitely convince her. It might just have to be like a Patreon thing because we'll get into like the wedding and stuff. But I, I want to do something with her and kind of go through the photos I took. Um, and just kind of do what we did last time we went and like go through the freaking... I thought that was fun. Go through like what our favorite thing was, our favorite place, attraction. You know, people trying to scam us. We got a lot of funny stuff. We bought a fake, we bought a fake um, Louis Vuitton bag. <laughs> the eclipse is just an excuse for all the providers to pretend in nerf service to save a couple bucks. Very well could be what's going on with my internet. But you know, we always have terrible internet here. Don't don't worry about that. You have whiskey, you will survive. <laughs> I'm planning to use Bourbon Ranch Kinsey glasses to view the eclipse. Do I need to sign a waiver? Um, it'll be the last thing you ever see. But I can't stop you, you know? I need to know about that arm, balls, head thing. Oh, I was like trying to, I was trying to think of what, you, what that was. Um, you talking about that picture I posted, right? Or the, another arm, balls. <laughs> Did, did I send you samples with the tin? Oh, you're talking to Will T. What's up, Will T? Remember when she used to come say hi to us? Hey, Mama Ranch. I actually talked to Mama Ranch. Um, well, I mean, I text her all the time, but I... Um, she... What I'm saying is she verbalized to me that she needs to come on the stream again. So... You know it would be fun? I don't know how we would do this. I'm sure you guys can help me brainstorm. What if we did, like... Could we do some sort of blind flight with Mama Wrench? Like... It doesn't even... For for one, I feel like, though, it doesn't, like... I would I kind of wouldn't want it to be all bourbon. I would kind of want it to be, like... If someone has a lot of spirits, I would kind of want to, like... Get a blind flight of a bunch of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Does someone have a full bar and want to send a flight? Like, and let her grade them. Like, gin, vodka... 
bourbon scotch what else like a brandy i don't know that i think that would be funny this because i i imagine i would hate things and she'd be like oh wow that's not even that bad joe dickinson we're coming up with shenanigans I think that'd be funny. I just don't know, like, make her different margaritas. <laughs> that would be fun, like, margarita night. <laughs> Is gin a bourbon distillery? I think it's a distiller. Yeah. Gin, the bourbon distiller. On the way home, saw people on the street corners selling Eclipse swag. Steve, hey, I think, like, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, if you don't, because it's about what you guys want to see. But I think that'd be pretty funny to do, like, um, I forgot the tequila. I think doing, like, there's, like, a blind flight of, I don't know. I would definitely want to say, like, good i wouldn't want it to be sent but then again how do you make vodka good you know <laughs> no tequila for me i was gonna say like it, it would have to be something that's good you know i wouldn't want freaking crap <laughs> like sending me freaking this bull crap vodka and but then again, I don't know. That would also kind of be funny, too. I don't know. Just like a total random flight. I don't know if it's good, if it's bad, if it's flavored. You go get some green apple vodka, I might fight you. But I would drink it, you know? What's up, Henry? Good to see you, bud. All right, I'm going to do one more lucky seven. This is called the Hold Up 50 Proof. 50%. The 100 Proof. 50 Proof. The Holiday Toast is totally fine. I wouldn't say I absolutely loved it. I mean, it was just, it was good. Sorry, I gave you no notes. Who watches me for bourbon tasting notes? You know what I'm saying? What's up, bourbon buffalo enthusiasts? I have a crazy Irish gin that tastes like fruity pebbles. There we go. Eclipse CERN grid failure. What's up with all everyone talking about the CERN? Isn't that isn't the CERN? Or am I just making this up? I thought that was the thing that like shoots particles around, right? Get her some Everclear. I like good tequila. What's up, Liddy Casanova? Cheers, congrats. Feel any different now that you are a married man? No different other than I feel this thing. Like, I cannot get over this. Like, I can feel the ring at all times. Which is fine. Here. Here you go. You guys kept asking, here's Miss Wrench. You miss here she is. Ms. Wrench is here. Now she gone. How'd you like that Disco Eleven? Just poured one. I actually really like it. I'm gonna do a um for sure gonna shoot a video on it um i shot a video on the 1924 and i have to do um i gotta edit it and i'll get to that during the eclipse they're gonna fire the hadron collider at 11,000 per second and try and shatter space time no big deal So it may be the end of the world, friends. So 
you might as well drink now because it very well could be the last weekend you ever got. What's up, Donald Rance? My issue is, and I guess it is not really an issue. I've switched over. I'm using like the silicone rings just so I don't use my ring ring all the time. And it's the, my size, but it like, they definitely slide. I say that, I guess I'm swelling. But during the day, they slide more. So I'm always doing this. I'm like, I'm like jerking my finger all day. You know, I'm just, I just play with it. So like, if I'm, it's like just a, I don't know. I'm always, I'm either tapping my fingers, I'm tapping my feet, or I'm like over here like this. People look at me probably, I'm freaking crazy. NASA's also gonna fire some missiles during the eclipse. They are calling it Operation Serpent Deity. What is all of this? I gotta look into all of this. What the heck is going on? Dude, I, I'm just trying to sit outside and drink champagne and enjoy my wife. <laughs> Freaking serpent deity? Are you kidding? Live stream from Trev's backyard during the eclipse. It, all of my coworkers just told me to do that. that. That'd be fun. Like, I'd like that. I wouldn't mind. Oh, our glass is full, everyone. Drink your glass. Ha 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 ha. Gotcha, suckers. Rick, my son's name is Sheldon. I, I love how I just stopped there, but I was trying to think, isn't Sheldon... I'm not... I'm not well versed into good TV, but isn't Sheldon the name of a? Um, is that the Big Bang Theory? Took me probably a month or two for me to get used to always having my ring on. Now I don't realize it's there. I I don't know. It's getting better for sure. Like I'm noticing it less. But I mean, it's been pretty rough. Which is weird right now. I think I'm just my finger. I'm getting full of liquor, so my my fingers are swelling, and it's not. I'm like, dude, I can't even demonstrate what I do all the time. Let's do a blind flight. Let me get the glasses. Oops. And while I grab them and pour the glass, um, my friend is going to take over the stream. I don't know if you guys know, but that was actually, um, that was actually modeled after me. Little fun fact. 
I don't know if you guys knew that. I don't make the rules, I just follow them. Them Italians got no girth. <laughs> We're showing Miss Wrench pics. If Miss Wrench looked like that. What's up, Michael? Whiskey it is. Good evening, all of you one be wonderful whiskey people. Get in here. Had to include a little cease and desist in tonight's pours, guys. I'm telling you right now, if you haven't gotten yourself a C and D, a Panium 10 year old, Boo Rai. MGP mother freaking cease and desist they are like they might already be gone so maybe I'm speaking for nothing you you, you need to go get one of those ASAP um also our bull run picks are coming I mean those things are just taking on forever um but we got another pick that is Gearing up to be released in May. You guys don't even freak out. You ready for this? You ain't... I say you're ready for this. You ain't ready. For it. You ain't ready. You ain't ready! You ain't get ready! Michael, no. We're not listening to Cyberpunk 2077 soundtrack we're listening to four hour cyberpunk dark scent plasma royalty free copyright safe four hours we're currently pouring a blind flight from wise guy stew himself um he made me try d he made me try his d last week and it did not give me any hints. For one, by the time I tried it, like, I could maybe barely even remember that. I'm surprised I remember that I tried this last week. No, he made me try it. I don't know why. So maybe we'll find out. So what are you guys drinking? Get something in your glass. Let's go, Teddy Ball game. Still needing the 13th Colony? I know what I I might I could show you this. Everyone, get something in your glass. Let's freaking go. What are y'all doing? <laughs> Let me show you this. I'm kind of scared that I, I haven't reviewed any of these. Um, how about it's five minutes? I'm gonna have to do this during um, Patreon. We're sitting outside of my fountain. We took a lot of video. In in dang, I couldn't hear it. I I, I can't play it if I can't hear it because I don't know what I, we actually talked about. 
There you go. Get some cease and desist right there. What's up, Distilled Brood and Mother Freaking Reviewed? Redemption 9 store pick. What's up, Peter? Gandy Road got my first Rebecca Creek Spanish double oaked friggin' synthetic pork malfunction. Whoa! I've never seen a synthetic. Did the glue come off? 15 year old Knob Creek store pick 2020 in my glass. Ricardo, dude. Rub it in. Nulu single barrel store pick in my glass. No, SLB. Store pick. I thought it said SIV. It's only 5 p.m. out here in NorCal. It's 6.49 here, and guess what, brother? It's a long freaking weekend. We got Monday off. I got Monday off. It was the freaking eclipse. But that doesn't mean you can't party with us. Stu says, All right. Hope. You are all ready to have your mind blown. I don't know what that means. I'm honestly kind of nervous because I know I know Stu. Um, I, I feel like that could mean a lot of things. Stu has a lot of good things, but he also has a lot of good things that people don't know about. And I feel like Stu, when he says... Get ready to have y'all's mind blown. I think it's gonna be what I say about this. So I'm already on the, I'm already guessing that Stu probably put something in here that people think is really freaking good, and he put in things that are even better, and I'm gonna rank it not as good. That's my guess. Or I'm overthinking this, but I just wanted to throw out a guess into the universe. Let's try it. Glass A. I can't play Megadeth. I can only play this music because it's copyright free, and Megadeth definitely loves their money. What's up, Paolo? What's up, brother? What are you guys all drinking? I know I know Janelle said it, and you're answering it, but I'm going to say answer Janelle right now, and what are you drinking? This kind of gives me like a brown foreman vibe. Like a um, minuscule though. There's like a hint of banana and that's why I'm saying that. Hmm. I don't even think... I'll keep notes on the back of this. I'm off on Monday too. Let's freaking go. In honor of the long weekend, Bourbon Ranch, I'd like to suggest a Saturday Final Four Eclipse live stream. I, so what I really want to do is... I mean, it might end up being me. We'll see. But I would love if Miss Wrench could come and we do, like, um... It would probably need to be a Patreon because we did a lot of video. And we were slammered. Yeah, she ain't gonna like it to be on the big screen, so... We'll probably do a Patreon live stream this weekend sometime. Like, maybe just an hour going through the videos and the photos we took. And uh, I think that would be freaking hilarious because I haven't even rewatched them. Half of them, it was like 10 o'clock at night, were slammered on wine. And it's just great. Great times. We like reviewed. So basically, like every night, we would drunkenly review the day. <laughs> it's hilarious. Small batch select, let's go. I don't know. The more I go back to it, I'm losing banana. What's up, Mr. DJ Comeback? Russell's reserves are hitters. All of them. I don't know. I'm losing the banana now. And I'm losing confidence in my initial smell. Let me try it. Taste. I don't care what it smells like.
Whoa. Mm -mm. Whoa. 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 God dang. There's no... Dude, I don't... Granted, the lowest... I drank something that was 115 proof before this. That drink considerably hotter. Like, if that's not at least in the 130s, then I don't know what's... Something's wrong with it. That was hot. I'll go back to it, but god damn. Hot. 130 plus. Like, I I would even go ahead and say that's freaking... See, I wouldn't call it a hazmat because it doesn't come across that at all on the nose. I, I even wrote, I wrote down light on the nose. And then I tasted it. Let me, let me go back. Maybe that was a shock. Maybe that was a shock. I will watch for a stream this weekend on Patreon. I, I'll talk to her about it. I think that'd be fun. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, we, the honeymoon videos, they're freaking hilarious. Um, like that one I just pulled up was like five minutes of us sitting outside I, I guess talking about what we had just done <laughs> so yeah that'd be fun to like go back and watch them with, with you guys <laughs> and I got a lot I think I got 30 gigabytes of just stuff like that um yeah, in my video section, I have, and this is just from the camcorder I had. I won't be able to see. One, two. I have at least 85 videos from my camcorder, and that's not what I filmed on my phone. So... <laughs> it's a lot. Let's go back to it, and then we'll go on to B. Not as hot. Still hot. Still hot. I don't know what that is. Like, I don't, I feel like I've never tasted that. It doesn't have a here's the things that I look for when I when I go when I'm trying a blind I'm thinking of what could that be what have I tasted that's like that what realm does it fall into does it does that fall into oh well that's kind of MGP oh well that's kind of uh Brown Foreman so Brown Foreman Old Forester Jack Daniels Woodford Reserve stuff like that no could it be this? And then this is falling in a realm of I don't freaking know. I still think it's high proof. I, I, I don't know. That's really thrown me for a loop. What's up, Wilmington? Wilmington, you've been in here the whole time. I don't think I've said hello. Go to B. See, now this one's smelling a little more familiar. Um, I don't know. A is throwing me for a loop. That, like, something's going on with that. Like, something's... Um, I mean, I haven't heard official word. I haven't talked to him in particular either, Paul, but about Matt Madness. Um, Matt did just have, like, major mouth surgery. And we were talking about this last weekend. 
Um, he's got a lot. He had... He has a new job and major surgery. Um, I, I would go ahead and... I would tell him just to take the year off. And I feel like that's what he's doing. Um, I think he's got too much on his plate right now. And I think it's ridiculous to do that. Um... There's no way to there's you just shouldn't spread yourself that that thin. And I know that everyone is like, man, it's so fun, but sometimes you just gotta take care of yourself, you know? Everyone that's listening. Sometimes you gotta take care of yourself. Remember that. Smells good. Cheers. B for bussin'. Okay. Okay. See, that one's more... That one's more into, like, this milk chocolate. Again, I, it's so, like, unique. Milk chocolate. It's like, it's hard to pinpoint what that could be. It doesn't have a definitive, like, this is this distillery. What's up, Jason Newman? Hey, y'all, thanks for keeping me company during my graveyard shift. What are you, what are you up to? Jason. What's up, Sugar Kitty? Sugar Kitty, I'm pretty sure I saw you at, um, I'm pretty sure I saw you at least reincarnated, maybe, at the, the Cat Sanctuary in Rome. Pretty sure that was you. What's up, Jake Miller? 50th, 50th, like for one. 50? That's all? Okay. Alright, I'll remember that. That's fine. No worries. So Wise Guy Stu says this lineup is super tough to guess, but the theme of the flight would be best described as unique. I'm going to tell you right now, A and B are nothing alike at all. There's no way that I can guess. Just off of those two, there's no way I could know. Javier Acosta, you have a separate video, live video from earlier that ran 15 minutes. Javier, you, yeah, you missed that. We had a major malfunction. So we restarted. All the episodes of Masters of Era are available, so you better start watching. There we go. Old Forster 1897 is underrated. Finally, someone else do, that agrees with me. What's up? Edo, how fun is the airsoft? I might try it out. Um, I freaking love it. it. It depends on where you're at, too. Um, I feel like Tito, send me a message, dude. I know you, you, um, you have me on Instagram. Send me a message. We'll talk about it. It depends. Like, I need to know what, like, what you're doing. So, we'll talk. That'd be fun. I'll hook you up. I'll help you out. Yeah, I'm still I'm still getting this chocolatey thing on B. Not as high a proof. Maybe closer to a hundred or man, A just drank high freaking proof. So it's making me feel like a hundred is too low for B, but 
110 max, but I'm thinking closer to 100. Let's go to C, baby. All right, Will. You better get back here. There we go. Ooh, I really, I think so far C is my favorite. It seems like an evolution of B. I'm starting to think something, and I'm not, I am not going to say it until I have a definitive guess. I, I have a, I think something. Richie, Trev, you look and sound a hunk. Richie, hype it. Richie, I'm about to freaking kiss you. Wilmington, is, is there a theme? Um, That's the theme. Here's my notes. With some dog hair in the tape. So you know, I have an out, like, this tape stuck to the box and I just sealed it. I don't know the theme. Blind key, baby. <laughs> this background music makes me think of a 1980s video game. Trev, gonna be in St. Louis in September, only five hours from you. What do you, for one, what are you doing in St. Louis? And two, let's make something freaking happen. I'm sure I could tell I, I could tell Miss Wrench we got freaking She's she's we've never been to St. Louis together. I'll, I'm sure there's something fun up there. Let's try it. I, I feel like I'm getting on to Oh no. I might I might figure something out. Didn't figure it out. Still my favorite one. There, that one almost gave. It almost. At this point, I'm I'm totally guessing. They've been so different from each other. Um. Hey. I, we could go up for a Cardinals game. I would like to go watch a baseball game. And you know I'm I'm going up the freaking arch. Whiskey hunting in St. Louis. Featuring Miss Wrench and Janelle. Who would watch it? Pike pack a sidearm in St. Louis. <laughs> Bro... Let's face it, everywhere's got crime, but you ain't just gonna get freaking... I ain't too worried about it, man. I mean, there are places in Afghanistan you can go and it's totally safe. Like, bro, it's fine. They're not, these people aren't gonna kill you. I feel like most of the people who get killed in these big bad cities are people who were engaged in things that how do I word this play stupid games win stupid prizes I'm sure there's random innocent killings but I feel like most of them are I'm that dude just I'm gonna kill him so it ain't like a family driving through St. Louis. Oh, look at the arch. It's great. Bam, 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 bam. You know? <laughs> That's that family. <laughs> it's like everywhere, you know? Andreski, nothing good happens after three. You know? It's like... Freaking... Like... Is there, is there, I, I, we got statistics of how many murders, but like, can we break down the murders of, 
truly innocent random victims versus criminals die. Okay, <laughs> like, I feel like that's a good break. We should separate, like, criminal activity that, in, that results in death versus random bypasser slash innocent random killing. I feel like the statistic then is much lower. Look at you guys, it got me on this tangent. <laughs> it's, it definitely happens, I know it does. But I don't think, I think most of them are What's up, Paul? Nervon? Treadward, prostitutes. I mean, it could be. What's up, David the Easterling? Act like a victim? Become a victim. Keep these thugs away from my bourbon stash. <laughs> Situational awareness. Exactly. I like the whole, the whole act like a victim, become a victim. If you, I don't know, man. I, I agree with that statement a lot. If you just are vulnerable and you're lost in the sauce, you become a victim. It's that you're a target of opportunity. Walk like you mean something. Walk like you mean business. Freaking, I don't know, get a concealed carry. Now, downtown Portland, somewhere in Portland, like where all those drug camps are, never, I will never go there. Andretsky, sorry. No bourbon hunting there. I don't want to get stabbed with needles. And I don't know. I was almost going to call this, like, this tastes MGP-like. Like, good MGP. I'm all over the freaking place. You guys got me distracted on, like, murder and... criminal activity. I'm going to have to go back through these. I just, I just need to wet the whistle with them. Hmm. It's very interesting that Stu made me try D last week. And then I'm trying it now. And I think it's my favorite of the lot. And then I was gonna, I'm gonna go back and say this is like the most, I don't know, on the nose, I said, I said banana on A, absolutely not. I'm getting it here. Like a soft, I don't know, yellow, bananas yellow. Very sweet, but like a subtle sweetness, like a fruity sweetness. So now you, so you now love the D. Henry, I've always loved the D, brother. Stabby stores are the best. <laughs> uh, stabby stores. Here's the thing. You might get a great deal. You also might get 37 stitches. You know? David? David Uton? David Utton. I don't know, David. I feel like you're new here. I don't recognize your photo. David, but he says, bro, JT Melick has strength rice whiskey is pretty amazing. Let's freaking go. And that's what I interpreted this being. Um, I don't know, David, have, have you been here? I don't recognize your photo. That's what throws me off. When you guys change your photos, it throws me off. Uh, but David, says JT Melick. I've heard great things about the JT Melick. Great things about him. Again, I'm going to be honest, I have not tried the JT Mill. 
But Paulo, of course. I'm like, why would you not love a good D? You know? It's just so thick, girthy, completely filling. Here, let me let me taste it. I need to taste it. Yep, creamy. Mouth coating. Vanilla. Yeah, warm. I like it. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna tell you right now that's, that's the best one. It is. I was, I was definitely screwing with you, uh, but those notes definitely, actually, that I'm, I actually wasn't joking. Like that's freaking good. Like I'm getting those, those. It, I can't wait for none of these to be brown foreman. The amount of like creaminess though that one had compared to the rest was over the top. I don't know. I feel like that's got to be something. I don't know. It's not giving me a. De None of these are giving me a definitive. I feel like it's gonna be. They're gonna be something. I don't know. Some of them should might be something that we know, like, oh, you didn't guess Jack Daniels. I feel like this is going to be some, something from a brand that is different from the other things in their lineup. Because this one's reminding me of, like, a Jack or an Old Ford. I don't know. Something in a Brown Foreman lineup, but it's just not, it's not delivered. Like, I, I haven't had it. And if I have, then I'm an idiot. Mm. See, it confuses me. This is so confusing. I drink it and I'm not getting any of the... any of that banana sweetness, like this sweet fruitiness. I'm getting much more of this creamy, like, heavy cream, freaking half and half condensed milk dessert. And caramel. I think it's my best, my favorite one. Though. I, I couldn't tell you what any of these are. I, I, I genuinely don't know. Um, I'm sure it's not helping drinking them side by side. I'm, I'm sure it's throwing me off even more. I couldn't tell you, I couldn't give you a single good guess on any of them. Distillery... Uh, brand anything. I really can't. I, I have no clue. This is a good blind. So Stu says you have tried this, but not at the same time, and that's that's why I said when you try them side by side, it's like it it really persuades your like how you interpret and taste things. All right, Mr. DJ, come back. Go play some music, brother. Cheers, buddy. Joe Thompson, late to the party, rough week for me, drinking a 101 Sprite and Lime. Let's go. Hey, Joe. You missed it. I cracked into a couple. There we go. I cracked into a couple of those guys. Not the proprietors, though. Saving the, I, I, I'm going to save those suckers for when you're there. What's up, Cheech? Hey, Cheech. Um, Cheech. 
teach. Are we allowed to talk about the thing? Or am I too early? Unless you don't know about it. And I just spoiled it. Yes, you can talk about it. Okay. Thank God. So, everyone, we're going to do a little announcement. Um, our good friend, Cheech. Our da mother friggin' Lino. So, um, I actually learned about this from Shayla. Whiskey Central Shayla was, she came to our house. And we were hanging out and drinking and having a good time and she actually brought up this story about a couple of days ago being with Cheech and how they were in a freaking car accident and Cheech can also attest to this I literally texted him as she was telling me this story and I was like you trying to freaking kill Shayla um, but Cheech and them were in a, uh, an accident, and Cheech is, you know, I love Cheech so much. He's definitely, like, three layers below me in the skill of drumming, but Cheech driving the vehicle jacked up his hands and his feet and totaled the freaking car and as a drummer you rely on your hands and your feet and a car to get you where you need to go um, thankfully they're all okay um, in all seriousness uh, Shayla showed me a picture of the car and it was Jack. And so we have, yeah, Sugar Kitty. Post that mother freaking link. We have, there's a link going on. There is a GoFundMe to directly support um, Cheech. And there it is. And you know, you know how whiskey tube is, guys. Um, I'll pin that message. You know how whiskey tube is. Um, for one, I would ask you to just because you want to go donate a coffee. You know, instead of going to Starbucks, how about you give them freaking seven dollars, or give them whatever you can do, but. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Go give a cup of coffee to the GoFundMe. Help our brother out. In, like, all Whiskey 2 fashion. Um, pretty sure we're rallying up some sort of crazy freaking party giveaway. So, I don't know. If you don't want to give up a coffee and you want to win whiskey, go help. Sheesh. Seriously. Um, I would say first do it because Cheech is an awesome human being, and that's all you need to do. Um, again, anything helps. Skip make freaking Donalds. Skip Dairy Queen for a night. I'll tell Miss Wrench that. Donate the five, ten bucks to the GoFundMe. Also, I'm still a better drummer. I don't know. I, I, yeah, it feels bad. I can't even joke about that because I think Cheech probably way better than me. I can't even joke about that. Cheech, I freaking love you, dude. I can't even joke about that. This felt wrong. It's like spitting blasphemy. Let's go back through this blind and try and pinpoint what the freak we're drinking. 
Yeah, Cheech. Cheech, now that you're freaking hurt, dude, can we, um, you want to do, like, a drum battle, bro? I'll freaking beat you. You know? Oh, you can't challenge me right now? It's fine, whatever. Forfeit. I'm better. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> okay. You heard it here first. <laughs> hey, more importantly, I'm glad you guys are all okay. Honestly, that's, that's all there is to it. Um. That's that's all that matters to me. I know this community will take care of you. Um, I know you'll get better, but you're okay and you're here, and that's all that freaking matters. So cheers to that. Going from D to A makes A smell. It's so grainy. Comparatively. Like I'm getting the cereal note. Dave Trev Lombardo. Hey, dude, I can play. I can play freaking Raining Blood, okay? It's got this. I almost want to guess what that is, but I'm always scared. I'm always scared to guess something that's like negative. As in, let me let me put it this way. Let me let me say this because I'm drinking that and I I don't hate it. But what I'm starting to think it is, is a bottle I don't like. And I'm like, do I guess that's what it is? Because what if it's not that? And then it makes whatever this it actually is bad. Because I've talked so much crap about it. There's no way that's it's that bottle. I just feel like these other things are, pers like, they're, they're making me smell it differently. Because it's not bad. So I need to get that guess out of my head. It's not that. Best toasted or double double barreled bourbon? Travis, Melvin, I would say the best readily available. You could go to the store no matter where you're at in the country. I mean, I don't know. You might be somewhere crazy. The most easy to get best toasted or double barrel bourbon I would say is Old Forester 1910. I think it's better than Woodford Double Oaked, which is everywhere. I think 1910 is basically everywhere. I mean, come on, what else, guys? That's I'm, I'm talking... Okay. It depends on best. I always go for who... How easy can you get it? Fly Fisher! How did I miss that? Let's replay that. I freaking missed it. I, I mean, I, I agree with it. Whoa, what happened to my freaking... What happened? What happened to my god dang fireworks? I'm seeing it. Uh, 
I'm about to get you back, brother. Thank God. Fly mother freaking Fisher, $15 Mega Gen. Hey, Trev, Miss Fly Fisher says you need to buy Miss Wrench a legit Louis Vuitton purse. She is worth it. I. I have a photo. I might have shown the photo. I don't think. Yeah, I did show the photo, but I'm going to show it again. So we're outside of Saint. Um, whatever. Here's her fake purse. We just bought it from a dude from Africa. Totally illegal into the country selling these purpose, uh, purses. Um, it was, it was, she looked at it and she goes, oh my God, that's a Louis Vuitton, like a fake. And I go, I go, if it's a good price, would you want one? And she just chuckled. Like she, we are slammered at this point, guys. Like, please do not get me wrong. We are like several glasses deep. Okay. Um, and she's like, she just chuckled. And I was like, okay, I know, I, I'm, I've been with her long enough. I know what this means. Um, so I walked up to the dude, and I go, how much? He goes, um, 80 euro. And I go, I'll give you 40 right now. And he goes, deal. Bro, we didn't even barter. I could have went lower. So, um, we ended up buying that fake ass Louis Vuitton bag. You know? <laughs> there was no haggling. Literally zero. He told me 80 and I I just I was like, I'm gonna do I'm just being dumb. Like half price. 40. Deal. Like that's what confused me is that he just deal. I could have told him anything. I feel like. What's up, Aaron? Uh, Penelope toasted. Good. Um, so Travis says, I agree, 1910 is amazing. Peerless is super good, too, but that isn't easy to find most of the time. Yeah, I would also say... So, Michter's toasted is... I feel like it's harder to find. I think Penelope toasted is a good one. Doc Swinson's toasted. If you're just trying to find something new that's toasted... Sagamore double up. What's up, Ben H? That's good. I think Trev really needs to get an RD1 pick. You sent me an RD1 Ombarana, James. James, I don't... I know you've been here. I don't think I've actually said it. What's up, James? He says he really likes the 1924, too. James, do you like it for the price, though? I think its issue is the price. I think it needs to be like a $70 to $80 bottle. What's up, Soggy Wes? Very soggy. Hot take, Sagamore Double Oak is better than Old Forester 1910. It It's very good. Very good. Let me go to B. my order these are so dude stew i don't i'm gonna be very interested to see what these are because i feel like they're so different and i want to know like once i know what they are i want to go back to them because that like i feel like he sent me something that i'm like oh i've had that oh now that i know what it is what's up mark wells sipping on a rare breed rye yum let's go I don't know, I really, I think I really like C and D. See, I was calling that MGP. There's no way. It's so dark. 
very dark. These are, I feel like none of these are ultra aged. I don't think any of these are like, I would be shocked if these are some sort of 15 year old thing. But they're all just very solid, like for what they are. And I think they're all pretty decent freaking proof. I think they're all definitely over a hundred. They're chocolatey, they're freaking mouth coating. I'm gonna guess that one maybe is 115. Maybe that other one was a little lower than that. I'm trying to guess proofs and all that stuff. Stu said, I sent opposite of I had that. So I think Stu sent you, sent me, sent you, sent me things that maybe. Things I've never had. Dark, like a veteran sense of dark humor. No, definitely not that dark. I would be, veterans would be canceled if they were filmed on YouTube in a bourbon wrench setting or any setting. Canceled. Canceled, done, you're out. That was the, that, you're the most, you're the worst human ever. That just made me, I, you, I'm, you're, I'm a, <laughs> shut up! Get hard. Take a joke. show me on this doll where it freaking hurts you. How about you freaking sog it? And if you don't like it, you can go do something about it. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. Yeah, I just stroked, Mark. Christ. No, not... Stu, I don't... This is... I don't know what this is, man. These day veteran talk would be normal speak in the 90s. The internet created a bunch of entitled sissies with right to... cancel culture can suck it how about you just get tough and like i don't know if someone wants to call you a freaking little whatever you just if you can't take it then maybe you just can't take what we call life grow up drink bourbon f your feelings you know f them People want to feel entitled and empowered. That's what they want. I'm right there with you. I would love to tell you some army jokes, but I simply can't. In fear of... Prison. Stupid. Freaking idiots. Sorry to any softies that are watching this channel, but... You don't fit in over here. What's up, Ron Wells? I'll drink to that. Truman shook. I'm hunting for that one. Which one? What's up, corn and mother freaking whiskey? That's what Patreon is for, Trev. It's still scary. <laughs> You would be surprised by some of the things we would talk about. They're not jokes. I'm not talking about jokes. I'm just saying, like, it, it's more so of, like, the things that are said. Like, I mean, you're living in a tank for 
three weeks straight, you're pretty freaking bored. And the things that are said are, like, shocking. Would be never said anywhere else. I, I mean, I I say them to Miss Ranch, and she just, at this point, she doesn't even acknowledge me. She just... <laughs> What's up, Josh Fritz? It's just the way it is, you know? Come on, you gotta be able... Is there any more cease and desist left? I don't know. Did we buy them out? Did anyone buy a cease and desist knife? We should still have some, Flyfisher. I keep looking this way because I'm looking at all my spares of cease and desist. Let me, let me wrap this up. Let me wrap this up. Let me wrap this up. What is said in the tank stays in the, stays in the tank, and that applies to the striker. A really confuses me because it, it gives me this graininess. Like it's going to be something... Maybe this is something... I don't know, crafty? But it's not bad. It gives me like a... It gives me a... um, Like a... Mini wheat. Like a frosted mini wheat type of feel. Putting a good... So, mini wheat versus frosted mini wheat. If anyone does not eat... If anyone chooses regular mini wheats over frosted mini wheats, you're a psychopath. This is this is sweeter. And it's much better on the palate. I would say though, out of out of all of them, it's my least favorite. D, I think, is my favorite. And then between, I think C is number two. So I think it's backwards. I think it goes D, C, B, A. I think I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. We're going to find out these answers. As soon as we get back. We're back. So, fun fact about this story. Um, patrons, whenever we do the live stream, you'll hear this again. But um, one of the days we were in Rome, we walked outside of our hotel, and there was the Rome Marathon, a.k.a. like 90,000 people racing in this race. It was a huge deal, and we had no idea. We walked outside, and there's the Roman Marathon. So, I trained for months preparing for that race when I was stationed in Italy. Couldn't get past 12 miles when training. We literally, so, um, our, you know, in Rome, in, in all of Europe, you gotta, you gotta open your windows. There's no such thing as, like, constant air conditioning and stuff. So, I had the window open, and... We just like we heard all this cheering. It was like just people freaking the f out, and I was like, "Oh, it's St. Patty's Day! They're freaking partying." That that, that that was it. And then we left the hotel for the day, and literally, like, let's say a hundred feet to our left, the main road was right there, and there it was the marathon. And I'm like. 
what the F is is even this? And then Sarah's freaking out. Because she used to run marathons. She was like a marathon runner. She's like, oh my god, this is the freaking Rome Marathon. And I was like, how'd you, what? Let's find out what this crap is. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, I need this. So, my least favorite. So, basically, we're going in order of least favorite to favorite. So, my favorite was D, second C, third B. So, you know what I'm saying? Backwards. So, my least favorite, which I still thought was good, but it was very grainy. And knowing what I know now, it makes sense. I said it was very hot. And looking at everything it's only I'm not going to spoil anything but there is no proof on D because it's crazy it's the only the second highest proof but it at first drank really hot um A is old elk 8 year MGP at 113.2 I think that, oh, I think that graininess that I was picking up on is Old Elk is very malty. Very malty. And I typically do not like that. Going back to it, knowing that it's Old Elk, I can see that. But definitely, that's where I was getting that grainy. I was calling it Frosted Mini Weeds. It's, it's the malt. It's the high malt. They have a 34% malted barley. I just don't. I don't like it. I don't like it. It ain't for me. They each their own, and that's why we have different things. 51% corn, 15% rye, 34% malted barley. That is high. Malted barley. It doesn't it does not taste like scotch, okay? I know everyone's like malted barley scotch. It does not drink or taste that way, but... Baker Drinks just became a freaking member! Baker Drinks? Baker Drinks doesn't get a fireworks? Thought I had that set up. Hey, Baker Drinks, you reminded me I gotta re to get back to you. I've been doing my taxes today, Baker. But we'll go ahead and announce it here. Um, in a whenever we discover when we decide. Baker Drinks and I, we're gonna be streaming together. To go check out Baker Drinks. Can you do mine too, Trev? What do you would do yours what? What do you mean you want me to do what? So there's that. That was number four. That was my least favorite. Now is my third. Taxes. Do my taxes. No. I might be the, um... I owe so much money. Like, guys, all of this stuff that we do, and I don't know if people are just, I don't know, evading taxes. I owe a lot of money because of you fools. We need to start a fund. I'm gonna start doing a giveaway and calling it Freaking Trevor's tax fund. Jesus. You guys robbing me. Um, third place. Which is honestly crazy. For one, I've never even heard of this. B was a bottle called Grass Widow.
10 year MGP 97.8 finished in Madeira. Grass Widow. James B. Absolutely not. It's just it's just crazy. No, I plan for it. I'm just screwing with you guys, but it always sucks tax season coming around. <laughs> The, the issue, here's the issue, James, is that tax season, aka right now, is happening, I don't know, two weeks after wedding and honeymoon. And then now I'm going to owe taxes. So, it's kind of like a triple whammy. I'm really not getting the, I'm not getting the Madeira, Stu. I know I'm starting to feel pretty good. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling good. Feeling loose. But the Madeira? I might could see it. 10-year-old MGP finished in Madeira. I mean, I guess I can kind of see the MGP, and then there's something blocking the MGP. That, that that's hard that I think that's a hard one to guess I guess maybe finished MGPs would be pretty difficult I can only yeah I would never guess Madeira I think the Madeira I think the Madeira definitely softens it on the palate. Can you write off all that whiskey? Um, I'll be totally transparent with all of you guys. Um, well, I already moved it. I keep every receipt um, for whiskey. Um, this room is a write-off. Um, my gas mileage to the liquor store. All of that stuff. And I still owe, like, over a thousand dollars. So, while it, it's a write-off, I, I don't know how much it's actually helping me. Maybe it's keeping me out of prison. But, it's not like it's free you know i'll just i'll tell you guys that i don't know if anyone else will tell you that i don't know how anyone else is doing their taxes or if they're doing them it ain't free for sure there's a lot of stuff that we can write off but what is write off Trust me, my, um, <clears throat> I don't, I have a uh, family member who does our taxes, and she really keeps me out of the shit, so, <clears throat> she asks me everything. I work for the IRS, and I'm taking notes. David's like, dude, this guy's about to go to prison. I'm get whoa, whoa whoa Jay how are you getting back ten thousand bro? I'm owing money. Solar credit? What the freak is that? Yeah, let's go ahead and ban David thirteen point one. He's done. He's out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Unless he actually is. Or, or we can make friends with David and he can be on my case. Whiskey Burger, you just need to spend more than you receive. My wife can teach you
Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to figure something out because there's just no way that I should be owing all this money. No way. Let's move on. Um, Grass Widow's good. Totally fine. I don't even, like, what is that? Never even heard of that. Um, C was my second favorite. It's 117 proof called the Stew Blend. So Stew's Blend came in second. It's two parts Nashville, eight year MGP Kelvin Barrel. Two parts Old Soul, Old Soul, seven year MGP. One part Pillar Rum cherry cask. So there's rum in this blend. This is my second. This is like C and D were my clear winners. Knowing there's rum in it, I can smell like this. I wouldn't say I smell rum. I smell this over like super sweetness. Which has got to be coming from the rum. That makes total sense. Looking at it. Like, there's no way, though, that you would... Oh, there's rum in that. Treat the feds like mushrooms. Feed them shit and keep in the dark. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure there's people who just don't, and you know, the issue is all of these, uh, all of these people are sending me 1099 or 1090 whatevers. So the uh, IRS knows about me. Look, I'd rather pay and be safe than be a degenerate. You know what I'm saying? Haven't heard about Cat's Eye Distillery talked about tonight. Guess what, everyone? Bourbon Hunter. I can't actually talk about that here because that's a Patreon-only event. I, you almost just let me spoil Yeah. We are doing an in-person live event at Cat's Eye Distillery. Um, I'll go ahead and tease you guys. Not only like are we ramping up to do Bourbon Ranch, mother friggin' glasses, right? We're doing the next batch. Am I right? We're all we're set. We're due. We're due for some new glasses. Am I right? Yeah, we're freaking due. For some more Bourbon Ranch merch. Give me that. Yeah, look, I'm putting in the work on that sucker. What else do we got? We got the merch coming. Okay. We got the merch coming. But what else do we got? Barrel picks. What else do we got? We have Patreon only invite. Now here's the thing. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna freaking screw you. I'm not gonna jerk your chain. You gotta pay to go there. 
It's just the way it is. But we're going to be there at Cat's Eye Distillery. All I'm going to say is the people who go there, there are going to be barrels of whiskey that um, may end up in bottles. You know? So, there's that. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff going on there. Um, we were going there for some, you know, business, and we figured let's let people who are in the area or wherever, if you want to be crazy and show up, you can come show up and party, and we're going to party all weekend, drink some good whiskey, and do some crazy stuff with Gene regarding barrels. The date, is, it's the weekend before Memorial Day. Um, I specifically, I was like, I cannot do Memorial Day. Everyone's doing something on Memorial Day. So it's the weekend before. Like the 16th to 19th or something like that. So. Um, but hey, guess what? If you can't go, who cares? Guess what? You don't go. But we got the merch coming. I got I got some new stuff. I got something new that I'm going to do for Patreon merchandise this time. Something I've never done before. Brand new item. Um, I've been dabbling my sneaky little toes. You know, I love Kinsey's. I might, I, I probably will, I don't know. It, it's, it's tough. I want to do the Kinsey. I want to do a brand new glass I've never done. So maybe that will just be a bonus glass for, for those guys. We'll see. You guys are just going to get what you're going to get, and you're just going to support how you want to support, and you're going to get what you're going to freaking get. Okay, people? Let's find out what D is. My favorite bottle of the night. Glass D. Maker's 46 Barrel Proof Project. Finished with a stave from a maker's store pick. Cut a few small pieces from wet stave, put in bottle for three weeks. So you're telling me that Stu cut a piece of maker's stave and put it in a bottle and that's my favorite like he blended that he put freaking wet wood he dipped his wet wood into this liquid and then i put it in my mouth and it's my favorite i'm telling you it's different it definitely has a maker's vibe to it but it's different like, I think the stave really did make a difference. It's like an oakier Maker's 46. It is. That's what was throwing me off. I wouldn't I would not have guessed Maker's 46 because it was it was so much oakier than a Maker's Mark. So there's like, uh, like that. It's too oaky to be a maker's. I don't know what it could be, but it is maker's mark because he cut small pieces from wet stave. Guys, I'm telling you, that like that was my favorite of the of the flight. It made a difference. And I think he did, I think he did it good because you can't do that and let it sit too long. I think three weeks, like we're talking weeks, you can't let something, you know, I see so many people buy those like, those tiny casks and put some stuff in it and they'll let it sit for a year. Mm-mm. We're talking a matter of weeks, a month or two. There's like you cannot do it that long. It gets overbearing. 
I think three weeks was perfect to make a Maker's 46 taste oakier, right? Like in the perfect way. Maker's 46 cast strength amped up to the third degree. It is, it's like Maker's 46, but better. I still, I, I, I would have a very hard time um, guessing that that was Maker's. It, it was too oaky for me to say Maker's. Knowing what it was, I would try it and be like, oh yeah, that's, I can see the Maker's 46. What's up, JH? Very interesting blind. All completely freaking different. Rand I love blinds like this. Random. And it made it made me struggle the whole goddamn time. There was no theme. The theme was unique. You never had it. Never had this one, bud. No theme. Man, that was good. You know what we do now. Hit that mother friggin' like button is what you do right now. Here, I'll give you guys a teaser. Oops. I don't know what these are. Oops. Okay, so that wasn't a good video at all. That's all it was. Sempre la nostra manifestazione. La iniziamo con l'inno nazionale. I like the There we go. Here's you guys a video. Cheers, everyone. Get get you something in the glass and we'll finish the night up. Yes, the strawberry. Let's get some gelato going. Gelato. We're getting that gelato going, baby. You know what's good gelato? When it's covered, baby. It's all you want. Okay. Nice choice. I hope you guys can hear it. <laughs> Hear the video. You can't hear anything you're saying. If you guys can. Was that a is that a popular popular? Yeah. It's like I love just playing you guys on first video. No idea what's going on right here. Home tomorrow. Cheers on Dram it all cheers, buddy. Were you treated well in Italy? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I don't know. How do you say it? I, I get where they're coming from. I feel like they genuinely don't like tourists. I mean, just, I wouldn't either. Um, I think it all depends on who you are as a person. I think a lot of people are... I feel like people are just mean or whatever. And I think it's just because they're just annoyed with tourists. And I would be too. So if you're a cool person and you're actually talking to them, wanting to know whatever, I think they're much cooler with you than some freaking cockhead tourist that knows nothing and you don't even try and say, you can't even say chow. You know, like, like, at least try just be like hey ciao grazie like you know like do a learn learn two words and then like at least ask like what's your um 
What's your local wine here? What's what's your house wine? What's whatever? It, it, I think it just depends on who you are as a person. Like, we have no issues and everyone freaking loved us. Everyone else is just like, if you complain about it, I think it's you're the problem. You know? Cheers, everyone. Quick drive-by heading to bed. 4 a.m. road trip to Buffalo tomorrow. First grandson, second grandchild being born Tuesday. Let's go, Paul P. Heck yeah, brother. Cheers. Hey, let's raise a glass. Let's go. You're heading up to Buffalo. Let's do it, baby. Let's freaking do it. I would love to see Mr. and Mrs. Wrenches tied in a knot for a special wedding edition bourbon wrench. Well, that's lovely. I mean, I would do that. I, here's the thing, David, is like, I don't want to do that because some people are like, dude, I don't care about your freaking wedding. Like, give me like a cool, give me like a cool logo. But I kind of want to make a logo for that just for like, I don't know. Keep safe. We'll see. When is your next trip to Kentucky for some distillery tours? Um, James, um, fun fact for everyone. My, our, our next Kentucky trip might be sooner than later because, um, I don't know exactly when, but I signed up as a Maker's Mark ambassador right and you know how they do the whole we put your freaking name on a blah 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 well i did that um six years ago makers ages their stuff for six years so i'm thinking that i'm gonna get an email like any time saying my barrel's ready like, I'm thinking maybe this year. It might be, ju just judging by when I joined, I, I would expect it to be, like, this fall. Um, We would love, Sarah, Sarah loved, and I mean loved, Louisville, and she loved Bardstown. Um... I mean, I, I would, we would, if if we could redo the exact trip we took last time, I think she would say, let's freaking go. She, I think she'll do it. Trev, you don't need any more makers. <laughs> hey, dude, Richie. I'm actually friends with the, um... The guy who did our maker's pick is now like head honcho. So I might could like message him and just be like, dude, what do we got to do? I feel like a maker's pick would be a lot more money though. Um, we'll see. I'll, I'll message him and see what we can't get going. I think, I think we could at least try something the maker like all those top dogs man is just it's so expensive and it's hard for like little people like me like you you can't you can't have ten thousand subs and and get a maker's pick and if you do you got connections or you're partnering with like three other people who also have that many it's it's really it's really hard um, because they are much more expensive. Um, to buy a barrel, you have to buy the guys. You don't realize we're buy, these barrels are we buying the barrels. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not easy. Um, I think though, I don't know. I feel like I feel like our crew alone would do some damage to a mother freaking maker's mark. I would buy the I would buy half the goddamn barrel. I would I would buy it myself. I 
I'll message the guy. I'll message him. How many bottles in a barrel? You're usually looking... It, it ranges. Um, for a maker's dude, I, I, it, I, it wouldn't put it, I wouldn't put it past him to push 200, 200 bottles. So just a quick math. So you would do those maker's picks are like what? Let's just let's give it at the high end. Let's give high end eighty dollars a bottle times two hundred bottles. You're looking at sixteen thousand dollars. And that's just without the any markup. You see what I'm saying? If it was um, seventy dollars, two hundred bottles, fourteen thousand dollars for a barrel. Now here's the thing, Tom. A lot of brands will let you do half barrels, but when you're talking the big dogs, you know what I'm saying? So like. Some of the smaller guys, Doc Swenson's, Bull Run, um, some of the smaller guys will let you do a half a barrel. A lot of the big dogs, they, they don't they don't F around. Like, you want the barrel or you don't. You know what I'm saying? And that's the issue we're coming across is like, there's much larger groups that just come in and swipe it and they're just like, you know, and it's no, it's no flack to them, but there's a lot bigger groups. And I'm not taking, I'm not pinpointing anyone. I'm seeing there's like a handful of them that are just like breaking in the picks because they just sell. So these people, instead of like, hey, let's branch out and I don't know, let this guy do it. No, they're like, that guy sells picks, give it to him. And it's just, it's all about money. They don't care about, they don't care about, well, let's, let, let, let's let this guy's group sell whiskey. No, they're like, who's going to get us money? That's all there is to it. And it sucks, but, I mean, it's business. So, and Joe Dickinson, I'm sure your local Facebook group has a shit ton of people. And if they don't, they have, they have enough shit ton of people that buy the bottles all that matters is selling the barrel you sell the barrel you get more it's all that matters i mean i'm, I'm just giving you guys the secrets to freaking barrel picks it is it's hard it's it's hard because there is a lot of bottles and they you know, we aren't pricing them. If it was up to me, I wouldn't be spending, I wouldn't be charging, you know, $150 for a bottle, but that's what it costs. You ever thought about traveling to Missouri to do a barrel pick at Ben Holiday? Let's do a Ben Holiday pour because I have a new bottle. I got a new Ben Holiday. Aaron says, Reddit slash bourbon is crazy with the volume of picks and there's almost no overflow. And you know, here's the thing, guys. There comes a point, and I get it. I mean, I I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Like, what they're doing is exactly why... That's exactly what everyone wants. Um, There comes a point, and I'm, I, seriously, I'm not talking crap. I love talking shit. I'll do it to anyone. You name a person, I'll talk shit. Um, there comes a point, though, that... <clears throat> shoot, maybe one day I'll get there. But there comes a point where... You know that your bottles are selling it. Like, you can get a, bottle, a barrel, you sell out. It's all about, well, let's keep it flowing. Let's keep it flowing. Give me another barrel. Bloop. Give me another barrel, bloop. Give me another barrel, bloop. And it's like, it's just a chain. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm sure what they're getting is really good. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that. You just gotta know that this is a, 
supply line of making people money. Right? So, I just want you guys to be aware of the behind the scenes. I don't, I ain't these people who are like, don't ever talk to you about this stuff and like, yeah, we got uh, another pick coming and then give, give me your money. I give you guys the behind the scenes stuff that no other channel will. Is Bourbon R talk about this? Or whatever they're called, Bourboner? Bourboner? Do they talk about this? They ain't gonna talk about their finances. You gotta be real with your people. So maybe they do. I don't listen to their podcast. I'm, I hope they do. They seem like good guys. Is that the, um, I mean, I'm, this is gonna sh make me sound like a total dick. It, are those, is that, um, what's his name? Kenny? Do they have a Kenny? Oh my God, they killed Kenny. They got a Kenny, right? <laughs> I hope they have a Kenny Joe. Woo wee! We drinking some Joe Holiday. This is the first the Joe Holiday. Ben Holiday. I bought so we just started getting these in the state. And what was crazy to me, let, let's do a, a, a little hot take for those of you who are still here. Kenny is on Bourbon Pursuit. Then who's Bourbon, Bourbon R? He's not Bourboner. I don't know. I don't, come on, guys. I don't. You know what I do? I go. I I I work and I come home and I pet my dog and I love my wife and I drink bourbon and I don't watch. I don't know. I know minimal. I know a Kenny, and I know a Bourboner, and I know a Bourbon Pursuit, okay? Um, I'm sure they don't know any idea who I am, okay? So, at least I'm better than them. At least I'm not a screw top. Am I right? I kind of dig this screw top. Like, we don't need a cork. Am I right? Bourbon Hunter's like America's... Oh, there it is. Trev underestimating his influence. I might, I might, dude. I just genuinely don't. I just feel like I'm a regular dude. I, I, if anyone is influenced by me, I would love to like know why you're influenced by me. Like, do, don't bullshit me. Joe, Joe Dickinson, don't bullshit me. You're out. You, I can't. You can't answer that. What's up, Scotty? Um, this is the first. Okay, let me get back on. Let's lock it in. Ben Holiday. We just started getting these, and we got bottled in bond, and then Rick House proof, and then we got the soft red. Soft red blend or whatever. Soft red wheat. 100 proof. And then we got soft red cast drink. Here's the, the, the real weird thing, and I would love to have y'all's take on it. They were all, so the 100 proof bottles, 56 bucks. And then the cast drink version, 59 bucks. On all of them. So... There was no difference between this one. So this is the Rick House proof of the bourbon, but the Rick House proof of the soft wheat was also 59 bucks. And then the 100 proof version of both were also 56. What are the... I mean, I kind of like it. They're pricing it good. I dig it. But what the heck is that? You know, like, how are you, how are you, how is your cast strength and your hunter proof version within $3 of each other? 
I don't, I don't know. I just saw that and was like, well, which one do I freaking buy? They're all the same god dang price, you know? Like, I just don't know. They're all the same price. So I just bought this one, the bourbon cast ring. Honestly, I enjoy your content. Love the passion, says Jay Pouts. Jay, to this day, I still read your name and I'm like, how the freak do I say his last name? It's Scouts without the S. To this day, every time I read your freaking name. Duke McHale says teacher's pet. Not a fan of the soft red wheat. Interesting. Are you sure it is castring? Yeah. Well, it says Rick House proof. It's 121 or 120.1 proof. Here's the thing about cast strength barrel proof, Rick House proof. There's no legal definition. It's basically a arbitrary word for what it comes out of the cask, I think. I don't know. There's different definitions. It's so confusing. Like, there's no legal definition for at all. Um, AKA, like, wild turkey... So, let, let, like, let's put it this way. R wild turkey rare breed is barrel proof, but they're all 116.8. So you can water them down. Am I am I drunk right now? How can you be a barrel proof bourbon, but and you're all the same proof? It's because the, you can. You know what I'm saying? There ain't no legal definition of whatever. There's nothing that dictates that crap. Um, full proof, barrel proof. I think you need to start using words like uncut, unfiltered, um, aka there's no water added. Because, like, rare breed is cut. It's cut. So, it's barrel proof, but it's cut. But there's no legal, there's no legal barrier that's dictated. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm saying you can create the proof, but what I'm saying is like, I can put whatever freaking word I want on the barrel or on the label, but what we did to it could be so different. I mean, there's dudes, I mean, Elijah Craig barrel proof. You know, they've been really sucking the butt lately. But they get up to 136. They can do whatever they want. Um, some guys get into hazmat, and then other guys proof it down. They literally... Rare breed. Every bottle you get is 168 but then you go and get these bottles, it's 120.1, it's 123 point whatever, it's it's all different. So, and there's no legal barrier that is dictating it. They are all cast strength. They all prove. No legal definition. Um, 1792 foolproof is 125. Every one of them. 125. Barrel proof. It's because in I get what they're doing. So bourbon cannot go into a barrel over 125. Right? So uh white dog can't go into a oak barrel over 125 so they just either proof they probably proof it down to 125 every time 
it, it probably goes in at 125 and it probably raises proof and then they proof it down to 125 every time no legal definition it's barrel proof it's whatever i see why you know you see what i'm saying everyone has different motives they have different whatevers but aaron that's what i'm saying is like entry proof a bourbon can't legally go into like white dog cannot go into an oak cask over 125 and what happens when they age they usually raise proof so full proof like 1792 full proof if you took a barrel of that crap before they bottled it it's probably in the 130s 140s and they proof it down when they bottle it to 125 and then they call it you know barrel entry which is correct it went in at 125 that's absolutely correct and then to travis robinson's point if it's great who cares i don't freaking care at all i'm just we're just ranting for no reason brother we drunk you know if it that's my philosophy it's good i don't care now rick i while i agree with you barrel proof is what it enters at cast strength is what it comes out of the barrel at while i agree with you there's also no legal defin there's no legal law that dictates that so i can put cast strength like 1792 foolproof could put cast strength on it there's no law that dictates them from doing that that's what i'm getting at there's no actual maybe in our minds there are rules like me that makes sense that duh that makes sense that's what you should do there's no rule preventing me from doing it. So if I'm from, if I'm some cockhead, I could do that. And it's totally legal. It's not illegal. There's no definition. That's what's weird, is like there's so many terms that are just not dictated at all. What's up, Marty, Mike Franklin, Tim Robertson? What are you nerds doing here? I will say, this Rick House Proof, aka another word that they just made out, aka this is what came out, it's made up, it came out from the Rick House at this proof. I think that's their way of saying we pulled the barrel from the Rick House, dumped it in a bottle. Again, there's no legal definition at all. Um, and they don't even have to apply by that at all. They could water it down and whatever. They could trick you. And there's no legal ramifications. I would think Rick House proof is I pulled a barrel from the Rick and dumped it in some goddamn bottles. But there's no, you don't have to technically do that. Um, but anyway, who cares? What's up, organic bourbon? This is good. This is some good stuff. 60 bucks, foolproof bourbon, 60 bucks. You can't beat it. Like, let's face it, in the, in the, in the, in the market that we're dealing with right now, full of just overinflated priced bourbons that are, taste like ass, um, a $60 foolproof bourbon, that you can just go and get. That's what we need. I think we're going to see a... What's the word? Not a... A resurgence? Is it resurgence? I think we're going to see it... I think it's going to be stuff like this. That people are going to start buying. I think all of this... Oh, well... Uh, yeah, it's freaking rare, and, uh, yeah, we sold out. It, 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 people are gonna, 
it's it's getting old it's stupid it's worth it's a waste of time it's a freaking and they're not even that good i think stuff that's cast strength barrel proof rick house proof aka whatever 60 bucks i think this is what people are gonna circle back to and we're gonna get away from the bullshit we're not gonna be chasing freaking pappies and birthday bourbons um I wouldn't even say that. I would, like, take it down a notch. I, I you know, E.H. Taylor foolproof, you know? That should not be a rare bourbon, and it is. This is cast strength, and it tastes freaking amazing. E.H. Taylor barrel proof is going to go to the side. All of this bullshit is going to go to the side. All this marked up cast strength stuff that's really not worth more than its price tag people are gonna learn like you're gonna have to learn the hard way but you're gonna learn and it's gonna be a resurgence it's gonna be a you're gonna go back and it's so good to see this gaining traction because this is these are one of the guys you're gonna start seeing this stuff guys <laughs> everywhere it's good and it's 60 bucks and it's sitting there on my shelf. That's that's what people want. Good on the shelf. I want to drink it. Not good. I have to freaking push your grandma down and sell my left testicle. We're not doing that anymore. It's stupid. It's a, it's a waste of time. In a waste of your taste buds. Like what else are you doing? Are you just sitting there like <laughs> grow up? Welcome to the Bourbon Rich, where we talk crap about everyone. There's just no way. This is so good. For 60 bucks, man. $60, people. We're talking about it. Is it revolutionary? Absolutely not. This isn't like, oh my god, you have to go buy this. I'm just saying, bro, this is 60 bucks. I can't even go get Elijah Craig Barrel Proof anymore. But this is sitting there. Done. Donezo. Give me Ben Holiday. Period. You know? It's just, it's a good alternative that I think is only going to get better. The hype taters, people buying it not to enjoy. It'll die down and move to the next big thing. The good old days will be back. I don't even care about the good old days, you know? I I just care more about what's going on. And I think... What I think these... You see these guys up here? Stag, E.H. Taylor, Weller. You see all that bullshit up there? What have they done that has been innovative? Innovative. What have they done that's innovative? What have they done different? They've done nothing. They've done the same thing over and over and over and over again, and the price goes up and up and up again. There's nothing new, and if it's new, it's ass. CYPB, anybody? Freaking sucks. They've done nothing. They just they're just jerking off on all their cash. What meanwhile, people who actually care about bourbon are making bourbon. And they're making good stuff and they're putting it out at a good price. Cash drink, $60. Shoot, I might go buy their other bottles. How many freaking EH Taylor's Wellers that I'm am I buying? None. They ain't getting shit from me. You know who's getting money? Ben freaking Holiday. I might go buy all their goddamn stuff. This is clearly a distillery who is who cares about putting out good stuff, good quality, good proof. It's just they care. They care. So it's like you look at all of these big dogs 
They do. They have done nothing for years. They've done nothing. And then we can also say the people who are doing it wrong, Jim freaking Beam. Yeah, they're innovating. Guess what they're doing? They're putting out the same shit they put out 10 years ago, but they're charging 10 times the price for it. It's the same stuff. You literally took something that I used to drink and put it in a different bottle and are charging me six times the price. It's like, it's not working. It's not going to work. And I think, at least for me, and maybe I'm just ranting on my own, people who are doing it good, being Holiday. There's other brands that are doing it good. James E. Pepper. We've been raving about them putting out good stuff. Like, there are so many brands that are putting out good stuff, different stuff. It's not the same freaking thing, and they're putting it out at a price that it should be. Okay? I mean, it's just ridiculous. It makes you not even want to support them. It, like, I haven't bought a single Buffalo Trace freaking product in years. It's just, it's crazy. And it makes me think, if I'm feeling this way about it, who else is? Who else is feeling that way about it? There's gotta be, at some point... <laughs> Jesus Christ, we haven't even gone onto it, but I'm about to. And I did, I might have to refilm the whole video, and I might have to get drunk, because I'm about to go off. The, tr okay... Joe, you want me to talk about the Whiskey Freaking Traveler? That's another one. Ass. That's a celebrity whiskey. That's different. You know what's not different, though? Old Forester 1924. 115 bucks. If you can find it. If you can find it. 10-year-old bourbon. Eagle Rare. Okay, I love shitting on Buffalo Trace. Eagle Rare is cheaper than that. Eagle Rare is cheaper than that. Russell's 10. Knob Creek 9-year is just some... It's just their regular old freaking Knob Creek is 9 years old and it's 30 freaking bucks! Knob Creek 12! 12 it's older 60 bucks now that i'm thinking about it knob creek 15 is 15 years old and i think it's a hundred bucks huh that's interesting wow that's crazy. You're you're it's almost as if they're just they're just charging you for the age statement and not how good it is. Huh. That's freaking crazy. Come on, people. We need to we we need to we need to switch this channel and we need to start just just calling people out. This this is ridiculous. Am I right? Am I the only one? Are you, are you guys watching and think I'm crazy? Or are you like, yeah, I freaking agree. I mean, come on. 115 bucks for a night, a, a 10 year old old Forester? How old's their other stuff? How old is freaking 1920? You're telling me that that bottle is so much younger or whatever that it's half the price? I think people are losing sight and they're just after this. Knob Creek 9 is $28 at Costco. Nine? Come on. I know you got I know you guys overlooked Knob Creek 9 years old. Please go revisit it. Please. 
go buy you a Knob Creek 9. And then, if you can find a Old Forester 10, side by side it. Double dog dare ya. Do it. Do it. If you have both of those, if you have both of those bottles, I challenge you. You know what I challenge you? If you have a 1924 and a Knob Creek 9, or any, I don't know, Russell's 10, um, what else is cheap? Eagle Rare 10, uh, Henry McKenna 10 is also cheaper. Um, Widow Jane 10 is cheaper. Bullet 10 is cheaper. Um, I don't know. There's so much cheaper shit. Um, I would, I would highly encourage you, if you have both of them, to pour you two glasses, right? Pour you two glasses. I want you to take your phone like this, and I want you to send me, Trev, a very quick video. 30 seconds. I want you to grab the 1924. I want you to grab whatever 10-year-old bourbon. Then I want you to tell me which one's better. And for every person who does that, I will post it. Bullet 12 is cheaper. Knob Creek 12 is easier to find and cheaper. I'll take two 1915 blends. I drink more Knob Creek 9 than any other bottle. Knob Creek 9 and Russell's 10 over Eagle Rare and McKenna 10. But guess what? You can buy a Knob Creek 9, Russell's 10. Hold on, let's do the math. Knob Creek 9, Russell's 10. You could almost buy all four of those bottles for the same price as Old Forester, 1924. You can at least get three of them to one. You could get a Knob Creek... Here? You could get a Knob Creek 9, Russell's 10, and Eagle Rare. If you can find the Eagle Rare. Um, the McKenna 10 here is definitely overpriced, but even then you could get McKenna 10 and your choice of any other bottle. So two bottles, you know, like you, you see what the problem is. They're acting like, um, the price is worth this type of money. And it's like, we're not in that age anymore. It's not that hard to put out aged bourbon anymore. They have the power, they have the stock, they have everything. Bender, oh my God. Aaron, where the hell have you been? You showed up for this, huh? My latest favorite is Old Pepper Bottle and Bond and 43 bucks. Is it really? I might have to go buy that because I, I've been thinking about getting some of those deeper old peppers. You really like it, huh? What's up, Giselles? Do you need some Eagle Rare? I mean, it depends. How much? Louie, 1792, 12 year, getting no love. Here's my issue, Louie. Here's my issue. I would love to compare the 1792, 12 year is clearly better than um, the old Forster 1924. Um, I have to get it smuggled into me. I have to get it smuggled into me. Um, Bourbon usually goes and finds me a 1792 12 year. I can't get it. But that's the problem, and that's the problem with that bottle, and I think it's also the problem with the old Forster 1924. You can't get it. Even in how many of you guys have seen an Old Forester 1924? And of you who have seen it, how much was it? I think they're just... If you can find them, I think they're overpriced. And I think if you could find them for retail, they are overpriced. See, saw three the other day at 160. And he's talking about the 1792 um, 12-year... Fly Fisher, 1924 on the shelf for 200. Please, for the love of Christ, do not do that. People, 
I don't know what else to tell you. Do not do that. Do not do that. That bourbon dude says 250. Which one was 250? The 1924? Viper Candy seen 1924 for 135, 195, and 200. See, 135, I would have, before I got this bottle, I would have paid 135 just to try it. Now that I've tried it, I wouldn't pay more than like 70 freaking bucks. I mean, that's just simply put. Okay, so the bourbon dude says 1924 was 250. <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you right now, I'm like this is the most adamant I've been about a bottle. Just, there, no, do not. At this, like, after trying it, I wouldn't even do 135. I wouldn't do 115 again. <clears throat> Janelle, are you still here? What would you pay? Janelle is the one who got me the bottle. So she got hers the same price. I'd be interested. I, I think 70, 80 bucks. And I'm only giving it 80 just for like knowing the bourbon market. I don't even think it tastes 80. I think I think it tastes I think it's in line with all the other freaking ones. You know what I'm saying? It's in line with all the other bottles. I think it's a $60 freaking bottle. You know? It tastes $60 freaking good. That's all there is to it. I don't you don't need like I ain't gonna stroke your cock. It's not, it's not 115. It, it's ridiculous. That, that is robbery. They were playing off of hype and they were, they were milking it. They are milking it and there's no way that they, I don't know if, if it's a, if it's a thing that's supposed to be on the shelf, they, there's gotta, they have to adjust the price because I think they'll realize that no one's buying it. gotta find it to stroke it trust me i think at some point you're gonna start finding it because no one's buying it that price yeah they just milking that sucker bourbon junkie said it was like birthday bourbon amazing nose but falls flat on the palate i wouldn't even no i will say i will agree with them that the nose is better than the palate. I ain't gonna give it birthday bur bourbon nose. It's not even that good. Like, I think I th here's the thing, and this is where I differentiate myself from other people. I think people really buy into this whole hype, and then they they're so hyped up that when they they're getting into it, they're they they oversell it. And I I'm gonna go ahead and say all of the people who talk about how good that bottle smells is overselling it because they're super excited and then they taste it and then they realize that it's not that good. It does not smell that good. It does not smell like god dang birthday bro. Okay. It smells good. It smells better than it tastes. I will give it that, but it's not like smelling birthday bourbon. It's, it's fine. It's good. It ain't, you know, it's not like, you're not, yeah, it's overselling it. But at least we all came to the same conclusion. What's up? Organic bourbon, Mr. Jigs. Bourbon, bourbon, we were just, dude, I swear we talk about you and you show up. We were talking about the, um, um, 1792 12 year. What do you think about it? Um, someone said that it was overhyped and overpriced, but then again, they got it for a much higher price than you can get them. Um, I think for if you can get that bottle for retail price, I think it's. I mean, let's let's compare it to Old Forester 1924. It's two years older and better, in my opinion. I like it better. Four year, four roses, ten year store picks. So Janelle says it's not 
$115. I mean, I did. Here's the thing. I like. Oh, I like the old Forcer 1924. I just think their price. I think they're out of their freaking minds. I think they're trying to they're trying to milk you for money. I think that bottle should be in line with all of the other Whiskey Row bottles. It it really should be. It should be 60 bucks. And I think they knew, oh, well, it's going to have a 10-year age statement on it. We could totally get a lot more money for it. Whoever said that literally go f your own face and then i hope you're freaking i don't know go work it somewhere else i don't want to belittle someone by giving a crap job but um i don't know maybe you just don't have a job screw you screw you screw you um and then i don't know make it 60 bucks and call it good count your losses make it 60 bucks f them what's up dennis Has anyone tried 1792 Bottled and Bond? Any good? Bought one for 35 bucks. Absa freaking goddamn lootly. I love those bottles, dude. That for 35 bucks, you that's a steal, brother. 35 bucks is what they are normally priced, but they they go for more than that. Um Blyfacer says, with that said, what is your favorite Old Forester bourbon? Hmm. That's a hard one. I love Old Forester. I think that's what also makes me so upset. I think that's why so many people are upset, is we love Old Forester, and that just... It really rubbed us... Like, Old Forester Single Barrel Barrel Proof is Cheaper. If I had to pick my favorite. I'm gonna pick three. I'm gonna pick three because I don't I don't care. I can do that. Is a, a hypothetical question. Old Forester a hundred proof. Regular twenty dollar bottle. I think it's so versatile. I think you pour me a glass of it, I'm happy. Um, I like to pour it in a flask. I throw it in the ice chest. We take it to the lake. We take shots of it. It's like frozen chocolate banana. You guys got to try it. You're out in the lake, beating sun, swigging Old Forester, like cold ass Old Forester 100 proof. Amazing. Um, you can do whatever. You know, it's cheap. And then I think, I would say my third favorite. That's a tough one. I'm going to go with Old Forester 1897. My issue is that Old Forester 100 proof store picks exist, but I can't get them. I love those bottles so much, I cannot get them. Old Forester 1897, I can go and get. It's 100 proof. I get it. You're like, dude, freaking... Wait, I only gave you two. I gave you a 100 proof in that one. 1897. I think you might look at it and be like, well, 1920 is... It, it's higher proof and it's, it's the same price. They taste different. I love the 1897. Um, it, it's such a good bottle. It, it's totally different. It's different than the cheap one. It's di it's totally different from the twenty dollar bottle, and it's totally different from 1915. Um, it's just, I think if you passed that bottle up. I think you just need to go and get it. I think you need to go and get it. Give it a try. Um, ben, what did I what did I skip? I'll scroll up. Um, was that two or did I give three? Nineteen twenty. I would say nineteen twenty. 
Joe Dickinson's probably the only person who loves the Statesman. I just, I don't know, man. I, I could see, like, I didn't hate it, like, in the, in the terms of it just tasted terrible. But it was not, it didn't taste anything like the other Old Foresters, so. Some people might actually like it. Yeah, the 1897's so underrated. I absolutely agree. 1897's good for 50 bucks. 1897's solid. I'm telling you guys. Nineteen twenty four should be sixty nine ninety nine. Aaron, I'm absolute freaking goddamn lily. What's everyone drinking tonight? Everyone, what are you drinking? We need Jackie back at Old Forester. That's interesting. She leaves and it just goes to shit, huh? They put out some bull crap. One hundred and twenty dollar freaking ten year old bourbon. Hmm. Early times Baldwin Bonds, $21 a liter. I drink more 1897 than any other Old Forester product. I think it is. I think it's so underrated. I think the people who have tried it, I think are the people who were like, oh, okay. It's familiar. If you love Old Forester, you're going to love it. If you want something, it's not... It's not a hundred proof version of 1920. You know what I'm saying? I think they did a really good job at differentiating them. Um, shoot, I, I will even throw in 1924. They did a really good job at differentiating all of them, including the new 1924. The 1924 really doesn't even taste like a goddamn old Forester product. They did good. Good job. Price. That's all there is to it. Uh, what's up, Chris from Down Under? Probably 1870 is the only one I don't go to. Yep. If you watch my freaking... Um, I did an uh, Old Forester tier list video. That was the only one. Like, just skip on that bottle. Like, buy... 1910, 1920, 1897. <laughs> Other than now, the, the 1890, 24, 1890, 24, the 1924 is out. Yeah, I would skip on that one too. I, I, I'm not going to advocate for that bottle at all until the price goes down. Which it, it has to. It has to come down. If it's going to be a mainstay in their lineup, the price has to come down. They're, they're going to. I guarantee you there's no way that they will have sales of that bottle. Give it If it's a mainstay lineup bottle, their sales will deadline. Once people buy it, they'll never buy it again. They just simply won't. I guarantee you. The price will go down. Nineteen twenty four is early times recipe supposedly, so it's very different. See, I've heard that. I've heard people talking about that, and you know, I shot my review, and I might have to redo it because I I feel like I'd like this more angry. When I shoot my reviews, I'm not this angry, but I like angry. What I say is is still stands. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's early times recipe. I don't care all of that. I don't care what it is. All I care about is what it tastes like and how much am I paying for it. That's it. I don't care if you tell me, oh, it's the same recipe as Pappy. I, whatever. Like, you know, insert anything. The whatever, the mash bill. Oh, well, it's the same mash. It's, it's wild turkey. They're sourcing. I don't care about anything. I do not care where it came from, who it's from, which nut sack it came from, whatever. How much is it? And how good is it? 
That's it. I don't care. I don't care if it's Jack Daniels, Maker's Mark, Jesus Christ. What is the price? How good is it? Anger can be effective in a review. I'm down. What's up, Odyssey? Odyssey, I saw you come in here earlier, bro. Paulo's in. What's up, Mark Emenecker? Janelle, that's I'm That's another thing too is I was all of the other Here's another thing that we don't talk about. I'm I'm reshooting the video. You're going to hear a lot about this same shit. Old Forester 1870 sucks butt. It's not good. It's it's really not a good bottle at all. Um, the $20 bottles, the 86 proof and the 100 proof are so much better. It's it's just bad. I, and you can't even tell me otherwise. Um, it's 50 bucks. It's 50 freaking bucks. So you're telling me some shit bourbon is $50. And then the next bottle in the lineup, 1897, is 50 and then 1910 is like 55. And then 1920 is 60. And then 1924 is double the price. What else can we say? Like, how are we, how are, do you guys not realize that's them literally effing you? They are literally spreading your cheeks and effing you out of your wallet. Okay? Like, are we... Are we on the same page? Like, that's what that is. That's not... That's not fair. And I, I think they knew. And here's the thing. Here's the, you know what? I, I can't even put it past them. I can't put it past them that if I was in a business setting, I, it makes sense to me. Knowing the market, I would say if I was in that situation, not as me, because, you know, if I would, I would be fired. They would fire me real quick. Um... If I was in their shoes, though, I would say the same thing. We have never put out a... We've never put... So, here, let me... Let, uh, uh, uh. Old Forester has never put out an H-dated product besides... Birthday bourbon. Okay? I'm pretty sure. And if there's another one, then... Like, l leave it. Let me know. But for the most people that we know about, everyone will know Old Forster Birthday Bourbon. Age dated. Look how hyped it is. Look how sought after it is. I think they knew this going in when as soon as we put an age dated on a bottle, people are going to lose their freaking minds. They're going to be like, oh my God, Birthday Bourbon. Oh my God. Oh. They took advantage of us. All of us. And we did it. You ever watch that video? You ever watch the video? It's called, um, it's called What Fish. It's something like What Fish See. And there's these little hooks. And there's two dudes. There's a hook here, and there's a hook here, and there's a guy. And they're both, they're both, they're both biting at the hook, right? And then the dude. He gets taken. And the other dude, here's a hook, and he's like.
Do you get do you get the analogy? We're a bunch of freaking fish in a pond with a but with a freaking worm dangling in our face. They knew what they were doing and they knew what the market would go for and they priced it what peep they knew people would pay and they freaking spread our butt cheeks and they had their way with us okay there's n we, it's it's got to stop it's ridiculous it is ridiculous it's it's just I mean, I'm sure they don't care because they're just <laughs> F them. Like, I mean, it, it puts a, such a sour taste in my mouth that they would price that bottle that way. Yeah, just sells. I'm, I need a freaking Aperol, dude. I'm sick of bourbon. Tomorrow I'm drinking, I'm drinking nothing but champagne. Champagne only. It's none of this. I got, I got freaking Aperol Spritz to be made. Premeditated marketing. What's up, Prescription Bourbon? What's up, DMC? President's Choice is age dated. But again, DMC. President's Choice is also a bottle. You have to give your left nutsack, and you still might not get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not a bottle you can get. Travis Robinson says, Oh, Trev, your 10 year Burr Rye versus 1924. I'm going to tell you right now, Travis, I'm not going to be the one to do that. Um, I would much rather you guys do that. You can you can speak the truth. Um, that 10 year Burr Rye that we just released, aka, you can still buy it. I ain't trying to sell you on it. I'm more mad that the fact that we just put out a bottle, 10-year MGP Burai, basically the same proof, half the price. And it's, I would, I would say it's less oaky. Okay, I get it. I like it, but I like ours better. So you, you guys be the judge. If you have it, you let the people know. You tell them. Tell them. Do it. Do it. I, I, I'm not... I I don't make the stuff. I did not make the bourbon. So you can, you can say whatever you want to say about it. I'm just going to tell you right now, for the price and what you're getting... It's just, it's stupid. Like, how are, how is it that we are putting out this bottle for this price when they're putting it out at this price? I just, I don't, I don't, what do you, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't. I'm not saying we're putting out the we don't I'm not making it. We're not putting out the best stuff on the planet, but we're also not charging freaking I feel like we're charging and I say we we ain't setting the prices. I think all the prices are fair for what they are. So 115 bucks, I would almost rather and by almost, I would say I would 100% rather I would rather take that 115 bucks and I would invest in my killing of my liver and I would buy a freaking, um, I'd buy the freaking super proofers. It's 150. That's what I would rather do. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> it just, it sucks because a long time old Forster fan, this release does not make sense. Janelle, I... Janelle, I'm glad we're on the same page. I just think the price is what they missed the mark on the price. I think the bottle, I think the liquid itself is good. It's not great. But if they would have put it out at 60 bucks in the Whiskey Row line, 
I think we wouldn't have, we would have been like, oh yeah, that's $60 bottle. It's good. And that's all there was to it. You know what I'm saying? I think all of the, the negativity is coming from the price and then that just leads you down rabbit holes of what the F are they doing? Drink a dime, let's go. What do we got? You wanna do another? Jay says, from memory, I would have given the 1924 the win over the C&D, but it's not double the price better. And then, you know, that's the thing. I think I personally, I don't know, maybe I, I might drink some C&D. Um, my issue, dude, and, and here's the thing, Jay, is, is, is let me, let me put it this way. Um... I have, and let me, let me say this and please tell me if I'm making sense right now, but in my brain, I'm, I'm making sense. There are bottles out there that I will drink a bottle and I'll say, yes, this bottle is, tastes better than this one. But I will consider this one is better than that one, judging by how much I reach for it. Like, I will drink a bottle like, man, that's really good. And then I'll never, I won't pour it again. And then I'll find a bottle and I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. And then I pour it, and then I pour it, and I pour it, and then the next day I pour it, and I pour it, and then the next day I pour it. And then two weeks later, I'm like, I'm pouring that bottle. So then I'm like, while I get that I think the taste of that might be better, I think the overall package of price drinkability, I think that might have a role in, in the things I like because if I don't want to drink it, if I'm I don't know, I'm scared to drink it. Oh, I paid this much money, I don't want to drink it. That's That should dock points. Oh, you don't want to, you ain't pouring it? What the freak are you doing? Like, you're just gonna wait for what? God dang, a, a wedding? You're gonna wait for a freaking funeral? You're gonna wait, like, what are you, why aren't you drinking that? Um, like, I want to drink bottles that are good and I've noticed I would say that that cease and desist dude I drink that like it's candy I mean it's 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 done I mean I just I keep pouring that sucker you know and it's like is it is it is it as good as 1924 no I mean let's be real I don't I think the 1924 has more depth and more more age characteristics to it. Um, I don't want to drink it, and it's also 120 bucks. So, I, I I think I think all whiskey is like that. I think it just depends down. I think there's like a there's like a a point of perfection for people who are like it's the perfect balance of price and drinkability and I'm gonna crush that mother ever. I like that's that's how I this bottle is to me. It's just it's so freaking drinkable that it's like I don't even care dude. <laughs> like let How do we turn the music?
I don't like that one. Did we just find the song? I love this bottle. This is probably one of my favorite picks we've done in the hot month. Like in terms of, I say that I say that loosely because I don't think it's as good as like um, like um, super proofers. You also can't drink super proofers like this, or else you'll die. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to you have to know what you're getting into. Super Proofers will kill you. You, you, your liver will die in like a single night. So we can't do that. Um, Patrons, get ready. Um, commercial break, get ready. We are starting to work. Here, I'll do something. What's up, Patreon? You want? You want some sick merch? You want? Exclusive merch. You want glasses full of whiskey. That's delicious. Do you? Yeah, I do too. Coming soon, baby. Let's go. What was that? You are mother freaking barrel bits. You are mother freaking glasses. The song ended. The song ended. I'm, I lost it. Ah! Oh! Listen here, people. I got a lot of stuff coming. Um, <clears throat> I know, you know, I, I'm a good, I'm a terrible salesperson when I don't have the merchandise in hand. But you know, if you guys are on the fence, that's cool. Stay on the fence. Stay on the fence. But I promise you, when I get I always, and here's my dilemma. I always buy a little extra 
because I know when I show you what I'm about to drop to the Patreon, aka in like, oh yeah, I have the glass. I know people are gonna sign up. So I buy some extra. If you if you miss that cutout frames, you're done. Like you ain't getting it. I mean I, I I don't know what to tell you. I give you enough heads up. I'm about to I order so my orders are several thousand dollars of merchandise and I do it all in once. And my house looks like Santa's freaking sleigh shop. So um we we we're ready. Um we're we're gearing up. Um new glasses, new I don't know what it's always different. It's always different. I have a new item though. All the way down to like the five dollar guys. No. Maybe. I don't want to promise anything. At least the ten dollar guys. I have a new item. I'm gonna, I'll have to see how much it costs. It's gonna be sick. I. I want it. Bad. It's gonna be good. I, I would. I think we can get it down to the five dollar guys. I think we can. Um, my issue. Here's the issue. Here's the big issue. And I, I'm. I'm transparent, unlike any other people. Shipping. Shipping. That's my issue. I don't know if I'm gonna able to cost effectively ship it to everyone that's five dollar and up. You guys are seeing behind the scenes Trev right now. Drunk is best and figuring things out. We'll see. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Ten dollars and up is for sure we'll get it. I don't I don't know. Five's tricky. I don't know how I'm gonna ship that. I'll have to ask. I'll have to go to the post office. Let's go, just go let me get you another damn drink. Can I get mine signed and delivered to Cat's Eye? Sure. Australia. I'll ship it to Australia. It'll cost you 30 bucks, but I'll do it. Trev, I forgot to tell you that I found my lost big and coin, and he's now safely in the glass case. What's my next four? I don't know, Teddy. What do you... Here's... Okay. If, if, if anyone's still here at this point in time means that you are just awesome people and I'm gonna tell you Teddy I want you to what I want you to pour is something that you thoroughly enjoy I don't want you to go and pour something, oh, I like this one, no. I want you to pick a bottle that you say, I love this bottle. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be rare. It can be. I want you to pick something that you just say, I freaking love this bottle. Teddy loves this bottle. That's what I want you to pour. That's what you're pouring. Callie, oh, hold on, I missed, I missed freaking. Mike Franklin, the legend, with his rainbow wrenches. Trev has the best Patreon rewards in the game. Mike Franklin's been around the whole time, and he knows. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot to do the Patreon uh, merch the way I do it. I don't know how other people do it. I'm sure they have another method, but there's, there's no way there's better than mine. It's a lot though, because it's just me. Um, I get it all made, and then I ship it by hand. Just me. A lot. Um, and it's a lot of money. But then again, you guys give a lot to this channel, so um, I give back. Um, the Patreon, you guys support the heck out of me. And I put literally majority of that money goes back into merchandise 
and in taxes. So, uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot of actual earning made there. It just goes back to you guys, and that's the thing. I work for a living, baby. <laughs> Freaking love you guys. But I make it good. I make it good. I make it, I make it really good for you guys. If you like stuff. I mean, here's the thing, man. Like, this is like a, a regular old, um, It's like a regular old coaster. Clearly, I've been using it. But that's the thing, like, it just, it's use. And it just looks good. Like, the leather just goes down. Like, honestly, some of the, when I mean, you can see the wrench, I don't think that's worn down from me using it, but it just looks good. It just looks nice. But that's the thing, guys. I always try and do something different. I always try and do something different. And then, Cali Drams, Jake, Merch Fund, $50 Super Chat, let's go. Man, you guys take care of me, people. Big and cheers. Here, hold on, I gotta show you guys. Here we go. the team big and coin baby only only OG legends have that coin the very next coin I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys so this next coin this coin right here with bourbon biggin and whiskey willow this was right before um, team biggin our big and passed away. So this coin is very special to the Bourbon Ridge crew. We got Bourbon in it, uh, big and in a freaking top hat, whiskey willow, very special. The military coin. My units patch. You guys might not think that's very cool, but it's very honorable to me. Wanted to give you guys something personal. And this is very personal to you guys. I love I love my coins. Um I have a whole coin display over there. And I love, I love the coins. I love the idea of the coins. I just, I just love doing that. It's the idea behind them. Do you have any recent luck on Russell's picks? I have not seen a Russell's pick in my area. We did start getting, um, my store, I went there, when I got the um, Ben Holiday, we had a regular Russell's, but I haven't seen a Russell's pick here in like, freaking three years the picks are gone it's like the regular ones i'm too much of a noob for the big end Fader Red, i might have an extra if you would if you collect coins i would love to give you one um i think i definitely have like an og big end coin that's like the most special this one right here um for those guys who have this one very, very. Biggin was very sick at that time that I took this photo. So I took this photo. Like, this is a photo I took. It's not a artistry. Gra like, I took that and I made it into that. And um, I put it in a coin. I'm um, very special. And, uh,.
What's up, Jeffrey Wack? Let's see the coin sometime. Let's go. Yeah, I have a whole... Yeah, I won't do it tonight. Because, you know, I'm drunk. I'll go on and on and on and on. But I got a lot of coins. A lot of coins. I have a whole little military coin collection. Whiskey tube, all that stuff. And I get that on a shirt. With the big one? I have this saved. I mean, I guess I, I could put that on a shirt. That'd be... I think that'd be cool, like, as, like, a pocket one. You know what I'm saying? Like, a little pocket big one. That'd be cool. <laughs> I might do that. Oh, my Franklin! Holy freaking crap! Thanks for the entertainment for the shipping. Ah, oh, Mike Franklin. Uh, you know what, Mike? I'll, I'll talk some crap, dude. It cost me, without saying where you're at, there's a couple of, it's you and like three other people. Man, you guys are like way out there. <laughs> no, seriously, dude, for one, you're insane. Um, thank you. Um, two, I don't care how far you are. Um, there's a couple of you guys in Canada that are on my Patreon and I, I put in, I have to fill out a whole extra ass freaking paperwork just to get you the stuff and I do it I don't care it cost me about so it cost me about $33 for some of you Canadians and I gotta fill out some paperwork and I do it I don't care you know <laughs> I don't freaking care where you're at what's up Jeffrey Wack? Amy Boom. Much love, Trev and Nerds. Number one big and fan. Miss that dude. I tell this story every time, and I don't care. I'll I'll tell it in, until the day I die. Um. Amy Boom sent a Christmas package. It was like a Christmas letter. I don't know. Maybe there was a flight or something in it. I don't. You know, that wasn't important. You know what was important was that in that package was a red mouse. It was a red mouse, um, like a little catnip type of mouse, and Biggin. By the time Amy Bohm sent that mouse, Biggin was old as pets. He's already, at that point in time, Biggin was already dying in the grand scheme of things. And that fool, he's too old to play. He got that, he got that mouse. That fool, he, okay, he wouldn't really play with it. He would like hit it and he would pull it to his head and then he would like lay on it and he would sleep on it. And that fool slept with that stupid red mouse like every night in like it was a big deal to me so um, not to make Amy Bone cry but um, the day I buried Biggin he had that red mouse with him so um, I would say I'm only saying that because Biggin I feel like in the early days of the Bourbon Ranch, for those of you who were there, he was as much part of this channel as I was. So, um, I think, you know, I'll, you gotta never forget where you come from, and I think that Biggin is where we came from. Back in the day, it was, it was me and Biggin, like, we were in the other studio and Biggin was crawling up on my lap. So we gotta, we gotta keep his memory alive. As long as I'm doing this, this is gonna happen. Sorry, Amy. But yeah, we, uh, that meant, a, that meant a lot. Like, seriously.
We need another one. One more. Then we'll wrap it up. 10 o'clock. God dang it, Amy. I blame Jeffrey Wack. It was all fine until Wack showed up. You know what I'm saying? Is the music? Yeah, I did turn up the music, didn't I? Probably, it probably took away from all of the sentimental stuff, huh? That's good. That's good. Do push-ups, huh? You may have missed my comment earlier. I'm planning on vacation this time of year. Any chance of pinning down a date to meet up in your neck? Yeah, dude. I'm telling you, anyone who's here, as long as you're not going to kidnap me, if you're in this area, for one, I would highly recommend you guys not even for me. I think, I think our state's a very beautiful state. I think it's somewhere to definitely get away. Um, if you don't want city people, you know, we're not, you're not talking Austin, Texas. There's not like 37 bars. Okay, there's not like that many cool things to do in terms of like partying. Um, it's a nice, quiet place to escape. And then you can come here and you can freaking get flamed. No, not going to kidnap? Well, I'm out. Faderade's literally canceling his plane ticket as we speak. And then Lone Wander, no kid. Are you guys the same freaking person? How close are you to Branson? Um, I think we're a four hour drive from Branson. We used to go to Branson as a kid. Like that was our um, vacation spot. Uh, going to the Branson Strip, um, going to Silver Dollar City, all that. Four hours. It's a straight shot. It's literally like, it's a big L. You you go down from Ranson, and then take an, a left, and then you're here. It's like the most boring drive. No money in kidnapping, Trev. I'm totally going to kidnap you at Cat's Eye. <laughs> Agreed, Arkansas is a beautiful state. Some of the best trout fishing in the country. Fly fisher, of course. He's like, bro, you got to you gotta come fish here. I would do fly fisher. I'm not a fisher, a fisherman or whatever. I would love, like, fly fisher. If you, if we could meet up at, um, let's say the Little Red River. I'm sure you know what that is. The Little Red. Like, you think, um, you think a day of, like, I'll bring, like, I'll bring some, uh, lunch and some bourbon. You want to fish? <laughs> you want to teach me how to fly fish? Like, I'll do it, dude. I can bring the fishing gear, you bring the bourbon, let's go. Fly Fisher, you need to go ahead and 
Text me, dude. We'll figure that out. The weather's nice. Let's go. You can't kidnap Trev. He owes too much in taxes. <laughs> yeah, you want to go to prison? I loved my cat. She hated me. She loved my mom and her shih tzu. She never purred for me in 17 years. You know, here's a funny, like Mike Franklin, all, Amy, all, all of those who were there. For all of those who knew Biggin, right? So Biggin lived till he was like 18. He didn't, that fool hated me. I think he hated everyone for like the the first probably like 10 years of his life. I mean, like he wouldn't purr, he wouldn't come and lay on you, he wouldn't snuggle you. Like this fool was a recluse. Just like it, it was ridiculous. Um towards the ends of his life is where like I think he realized like, you know what? Man, it kind of does feel good when they scratch my ears. And that's when he really, like, he became, he became my bud. Um, we were, and that's what's crazy. So, I don't know if you guys knew that, but, and I say you guys, like, Amy, Bohm, all of you guys who were around. Never saw the dude. Not never like that dude was like a recluse for ten years, just kind of just wandering around, just didn't give a flying piss. And then towards the end of his life, he was like, "You know what, Dad? Maybe you should scratch me." Yeah, we became we can we became best buds at the end. Wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, I was the same. I'm, I'm the same way, man. Dude, you don't, don't talk to me. <laughs> you know? Would love to meet folks in the real world from here. Hey, just good old me. Hey, seriously, dude. Hey, just good old me. You guys know where to find me. You plan a trip down here? We'll, we'll go to. Um, I got some uh, good contacts at Rock Town. The distillery. We, we can set something up. That'd be fun. Just let me know. I think it's I think it's a good time to come down here. Um I think it's worth I think I think our state's a, a slept on state. A lot of good stuff to see here. Don't scratch your ears, Trev. <laughs> Fingers crossed, but I'm hoping to meet Shayla and Mr. Whiskey Central this weekend. They're traveling all over. Amy Bohm, you must have missed that. So, last weekend... They were here. I need to... Hold on. I'll show you guys. I, I think it's hilarious. Nah. Go to my Instagram. You'll see it. Amy. Do you not, do you have Instagram? I posted, and Shayla posted it on Facebook. She was at our house last weekend. We had a good time. And when I say we had a good time, I feel like I'm too good of a host. Um... When you come and stay, when you come here, 
um, you don't remember much in the next day. The wine was flowing, the whiskey was flowing. There was not a lot of, you know, you're drunk. We, we're gonna get you, we're gonna feed you, and we're gonna feed you whiskey and wine and whatever you want. Old fashions, I made a couple old fashions. Um, I cracked open a bottle of wine. Um, I fired up the grill, and we were freaking slammered. Um, at one point in time, Shayla got in the, um, the hammock, and my dog was, like, attacking her. Those are some good photos. <laughs> hey, Jay. Jay Couts. Gotta get the kids to bed. Good night. Good to see you, bro. Freaking love you. Glad you're here. What is your go-to wine? It, 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 it depends. Um, like, I don't want to sound like a... Like, I almost, at this point in time, I wanted to start, like, a wine channel. Like, a wine wrench channel. Just because of how much I'm drinking wine and, like, wanting to talk about it. But... It depends on the color of wine. Like, what are you trying to do with your wine? That's the, you know what, that's what I'm saying. Like, what do you, like bourbon is, it's like, what do you want to do? You want high, what are you trying to do with your bourbon? I'm trying to drink it. But um, with wine, to me, it's like, well, when we're going out, like tomorrow, it's 80 degrees outside. I'm going to have a bottle of wine and some snacks and we're gonna go sit out on the porch and we're gonna drink the whole freaking bottle of wine maybe two and then if i cook steak i'm cracking open a bottle you know what i'm saying it's all different um red wine red wine i would say if you're not and this is just a safe thing for one it's delicious too yeah, I think everyone could like this. I'm not going to give you like a bitter, disgusting wine. I think if you want to drink red wine, Chianti. Chianti? Chianti Classico. Chianti Classico. Um, it's got a black cock on it. Chicken. A black chicken. A black cock chicken on the back. The Auntie Classico. Um, I think that's a safe bet. I just really... Like, if you hate that, I think you're not going to like any red wine. Like, that's all there is to it. Callie, though. Can you... Could you agree? Like, I don't know, Callie, if you've had Chianti. I don't... I, I see what you're saying, P, uh, Pinot Noir. I think Chianti is a better... I think, I think the Chianti is a better, like a safer version. I, I think P Pinot is still too dark and too Cabernet-like compared to Chianti Classico. I think for outsiders, I think, and I say outsiders, I say that like people who don't know wine, I think would love it. And I think people who love wine also love Chianti. I think that's just the that's just the best. I might be biased, but Chianti is such a like a, such a safe and delicious start. Now here's the thing, Shauna. She says Montepul Monte. I can't say it. I know what she's saying. I don't know if she even spelled it right. But I can't even say it right, so who knows? Um, but Monte Mont Montepulciano and Sangiovese. So Sangio so she's saying Sangiovese. Sangiovese is the grape, and Montepulciano is the town. Um, Chianti, Montepulciano, Brunello. 
all of those use key, um, Sangiovese grapes. I think that is the key to all of your answers. Sangiovese. Sangiovese. Brunello is all San, uh, Sangiovese. Chianti, mostly Sangiovese. It can have other grapes. Um, you start going into things like, you'll go into the liquor store and you'll see something like Toscana. You'll see cheaper Italian wines that are red. Toscana, Tuscuno, whatever. Like just bullcrap words. Sangiovese, but they're blended with other things. Sangiovese. That grape, I'm telling you, if you don't like wine, that's the wine you gotta try. Seriously, like, so. Shauna, she's saying that because she goes up, she goes, she said that, but then she goes, I also like Chianti too. I think it's just depending on which one you've tried. Um, they're all so good. Um, I think the, where was that? Someone spelled it out. Monte Pulciano. Monte Pul... I can't say it. Monte Pulciano is a very specific region and their wines there taste totally different. And I think she's tried it there and she's like, that's it. But they use a lot of Sangiovese. Very good. Very good. I, I, we might speak... We might be speaking to the choir here. You know what I'm saying? I think wines are very confusing because there's like 10,000 different grapes and they all taste different. So it's like, it, it's hard. I think it's like bourbon. Whereas bourbon like, oh, Heaven Hill versus Buffalo. Bro, we you ain't even scratching the surface of wine. I feel like the difference in wine is really like, I've liked it because it's made me like, for one, I love wine. It, it tastes delicious. But it's also fun learning it because it's like, oh, well, where is that from? Because this one is the same grape, but it comes from like a mile up the road and it tastes nothing the same. That's fun to me. It's just a nerd, like an alcohol drinking nerd. Um, I just like doing it. Um, here, I got another wine question, then I'll move on to a bourbon question. Where, what, where did it go? Someone said something. They, they were asking about white wine. Okay, Tony says, you drinking chilled wine outside? Absolutely. We have, like, a coaster for it. So, I'll put... So, for instance, Tony, um, like, we'll get a, like, a bottle of, um, uh, some, like, uh, uh, some bubbly. I'll throw it in the freezer, and then when we go outside, we got, like, a, a poster for it. Like, um, it's like a, like a koozie, but for a wine bottle. So it'll stay cold like we'll I mean, come on we drink fast over here you know you know what i'm saying we don't we ain't screwing around the other bottles chilling in the fridge you know what i'm saying um joe says what are we drinking now joe dude i don't even know just what it like, are you empty? Why did I dis disappear? No, 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 no. Something just happened to my camera. Wine koozie. It's a... We have a freaking... Like a thermos for wine. 
Guys, I will say, um, my wine portfolio and like my wine knowledge is probably what I'm more. I love bourbon, but it's more fun learning wine right now to me, and that's just me being me. Like I don't, I'm not freaking filming that. I'm just doing that on my own. Um, but it's it's really fun. Didn't you say you're doing magic tricks? <laughs> yeah, I disappeared. Robert Mandavi versus the world. I really need to expand my wine portfolio. It's like everything, Aaron. It's like bourbon when you first started. You saw a $10 bottle. And then you saw a... I mean, you don't... Let's not even... We don't even have to... Don't, don't let me act like I'm some wine expert. But think back when you saw bourbon. You saw $10 Evan Williams, and then you saw $25 whatever, Buffalo Trace. How different are those bottles? Totally freaking different. You see $10 Robert Mondavi, and then you'll see a $25 Chianti Classico from Italy. How different are those? So freaking different. And it's like, it, it, it's overwhelming at first because, I, I mean, shoot, I think wine is even more overwhelming than bourbon because it, like, the grapes themselves are different, whereas bourbon is all the same. It's the same grain, and it all depends on how they're aging in the barrel. So the difference all relies on the backside Whereas wine is like, well, I'm using Chardonnay versus Syrah. I'm like, bro, they're not even going to be... I don't care what we do. I could piss in the bottle. And it's, it's like, they're so different. It's just so expansive that it's just really hard. And then where you age it, it's like bourbon is like, we got United States. Wine is all over the world. I mean, it's just so, it's overwhelming. It's, it's almost unbearable. Um, you got to start small. And I'm still learning, so. You guys know what time it is. That's close. That's close. <laughs> Sometimes it's just about to come out. We're just hanging out now. Definitely the stage where wines, where he's thinking of paying 150 for Blanton's. No, 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 no. I love. So here's the thing, guys. I'm. I like seriously. I'm. I have already like started a channel. And by started it, I, like, made the email and have the channel ready to go. I would love just to be able to talk about wine from, like, a newbie perspective. I'm not some... You watch any wine channel and it's all, like, these freaking prestigious, well, I've drank, I'm a sommelier, and I'm... Dude, I just want to know what to go to the store and buy. And I don't see it. Like... That's the way I feel like the way I drink bourbon, though, too, is like, I don't care what the hype is. Let me say it for everyone. And this goes for every liquor. How is it? What does it taste like? How much does it cost? 
and is it worth it? That's it. That's all I care about. Um, and I love drinking wine. I like if I'm not drinking bourbon, I'm drinking wine. It, and I just because I just enjoyed. I want to get drunk on wine. <laughs> I'm not some schnob, but I love drinking wine. So, um, I don't know what I'm talking about at all. Like I, I, tr I try to. I want to know just for me. But I, it's more so if I want to know what I like. And I try something. Oh, I love that. What about that? Where does it come from? You know, what's the climb? Like, why do I like that? And then from there, it just expands. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I think it's much easier for wine than it is bourbon. You can drink a bourbon. It's like, oh my God, I love that. Well, why do you love it? It's hard to pinpoint like, oh, well, it came from Kentucky. Yeah, well, so did God dang. You kidding me? So did all of this other stuff come from Kentucky. So it's like. I think wine is much easier to pinpoint what you like and what you don't like versus bourbon. And I think that's what's really fun to me. David freaking mother freaking Goldman. What's up, man? Only downside is a great bottle of wine gets crushed in a night and a similar price bottle of bourbon lasts a lot longer. Now, I would agree. Um, that is the problem, is David. I started, um, I was that type of guy who was like, I will not, never buy a bottle of champagne because it starts at like, a bottle of champagne in America starts at like 40 to 50 bucks. And then I bought one. And I was like, are you kidding? Like, we're going to open this bottle and we have to finish a $40 bottle right now. Like, this today, it, it ends. 40 bucks. It's just good. It was just good. And um, sometimes you just got to make room in your budget. You know, You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what else to say. Um, Aaron says, what's your available hitter for a red wine? Aaron, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you something right now, and it might not be a... Where are you from? Because I'm going to give you a... I'm going to give you a bottle. Not a specific bottle. I'm going to give you a very specific region. That's something about wine, too, that's different. Is... I might not give you a very specific bottle that you can go get. Is we're not talking like Walmart Robert Mondavi, okay? We're moving past that. We're get, we're moving into you want good wine, you're going to have to like at least do minimal searching. And I know you're a bourbon drinker, so you know how to search. I'm going to give you a very specific thing to look for in the wine world that I think is cheap as piss and I think People who do not drink wine, I think, would love it. And I love it. So, Aaron, whenever you're ready, let me know. Trev, you could definitely become a level one sommelier, and your wine knowledge would expand tremendously in the process. I've thought about it, just for me. Yeah, I think it would be something fun for me to do. I just, I love, I love drinking wine. <laughs> I do. I just, I, I, I just drink it because I, it, I mean, it's like it's so fun to me. It's so fun to me. I wish I. That's why I want to start like filming this because I feel like I'm learning so much and I want to like document it. I feel like I go there and I just buy a bottle of something that I've never even heard of, and I learn so much by just drinking it. And I'm like, okay, okay, I get it now. It, it makes me feel like I'm going back to the bourbon world 
went for the first time and I wish I would have documented it. You know what I'm saying? This is ridiculous. I'm coming back. I don't know why it's doing this. It's like shutting off. That's how it all starts, Trev. I remember very alarmed about paying $100 for a bottle. I mean, that's how it starts. And I was like, bro, I ain't spending, I ain't spending more than $10 for a bottle of wine. And now I'm like, Oh, that bottle's only that bottle's only thirty bucks. Yeah, heck yeah. Like it. That's how it all starts. If I'm not drinking whiskey, I'm drinking espresso martinis. Okay, Teddy, are you? Are you Miss Wrench? She loves espresso martinis. Holy crap. Most of us aren't sommeliers. We want a real take. And I feel like, here's the thing, guys. Why I've even thought about doing this whole, like, wine channel thing is because it's like, every channel I watch are like, hello, I'm freaking, I'm freaking Aaron, and I'm level five sommelier, and I'm going to tell you how good this shit is. And it's like, okay, well, what about that cheap stuff? You know, like, I want it know what the random stuff is myself and no one's covering it no one's filming they're filming freaking dom perignon 300 dollars bottle of freaking champagne no one's buying that. i ain't buying that give me something what's the cheap stuff what's that 30 bottle dollar freaking champagne that i just found why is it 30 bucks? No one covering it. I just, I think that'd be fun for me, just like as a creative outlet. I don't care about viewers or subscribers. I would just want to like document what I'm learning. So, Trev, do you drink beer? No, God, something's going on. My camera keeps shutting off. I don't, hopefully you can still hear me when the camera shuts off. I definitely, I don't drink, I don't drink beer. I'm not a beer drinker. So when I say drink beer and this, I'm going to go ahead and call myself out. I drink like Michelob freaking ultra on the lake. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a beer drinker. Um... I don't drink craft beer. I don't drink IPA. I ain't, I'm not, I'm not drinking monk beer. Um, I'm drinking the cheapest of cheap shit just because it's beer and I'm on the lake. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it, but I'm not, I'm not into beer as I am into wine. I'm much more, I mean, I don't know if I would use the word passionate yeah, maybe I'm overheating. Are you a Zima drinker? Is that the freaking... No, I don't drink Zima, bro. Guy at Ace was helping another guy with whiskey. Guy didn't ask for help, and he called himself a connoisseur. Daniel just showed up. And he's calling out our local liquor store. They've done that to me, Daniel. They've done that to me. Hey, bro, what are you looking for? And I was like, don't worry, I'm just looking. And he's like, here, let me show you. And I was like... What are you going to show? <laughs> Please lead me over to the freaking jack. Please. I don't want to sound cocky, but come on. What are you going to show me? Dude, I bought everything off your shelf, bro. Trust me, I did my taxes. I My receipts show how much money I give this store. Oh, 
Aldi's got some good cheap wine. Here's the thing about wine, people. You don't need an expensive wine at all. So many people want to talk to you about freaking, oh, well, this wine's $80. You know, it, you don't have to. Wine is so good at like 20 bucks. You don't need it. We do need wrench wine content and travel content. That was all a test. I was trying to test out, like, I, I, I was trying to get a feel for how to film, like, travel things and film other content than bourbon. If I'm not drinking whiskey, I'm drinking... Nope, I read that. Shauna says a solid bottle that's afforded portable is Capilla Wine Claret. I think I think it depends on the wine. I would say some of my favorite When it comes to red wine, I've only drank a $100 bottle of red wine, and I've drank everything under it. When it comes to white wine, I've never drank something more than 40 bucks. But that being said, I would say if you ask me my favorite red wine and my favorite white wine, my answer would still be like, I would probably give you $30 bottle of red wine or or more like $20 red wine and for a white wine probably 20 bucks like is my favorite <laughs> like seriously it's ridiculous The only wine I haven't liked is Butter Chardonnay, says Daniel. That stuff should be that stuff should be killed. Sauvignon Blanc is delicious. I think Sauvignon Blanc, you also don't need to spend a lot of money. I would say 15 bucks for a good Sauvignon Blanc, like a cheap old Sauvignon Blanc. You can get a good one. A lot of people go for the $8 bottle of stuff. Just go up to $15. Double your price and you're fine. $15 Sauvignon Blanc. It's totally good. Go outside when it's springtime. It's freaking good. Chardonnay, though. Shit. You want... You want the, um... You look like a Zima drinker. Dude, I don't drink Zima. You want to drink um, Chardonnay? You want to drink, and this this is gonna make me sound like a snob, but you want to drink French Chardonnay. And if you do drink American Chardonnay, I would say drink the unoaked Chardonnay. There's very few of it, and if you don't like that, then drink Chili. So go to the 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 foreign version. Drink Chili Chardonnay. Buy a bottle of Argentina Chardonnay. Um, and then call it a day. Like, literally, don't buy any of the bullshit. Don't buy... You might like it. It's not good. It's butter. It tastes like buttered rolls. Um, don't buy California Chardonnay. I mean, I'm sorry. Sorry. Are you and Miss Wrench in a wine club? No. I I am part of a wine um wine club in the sense of I pay them X amount of money and then like 12 bottles of wine show up to my house. Um but that's it. We just drink a lot of wine. L I love wine. I 
I love wine about as much as bourbon. Um, granted, my wine collection is far smaller than I buy. I have a lot more bourbon than I do wine. Um, so there's that. But we we I I love wine. She love like the wine I get. She loves it. So I love lamp. Brick, do you really love lamp, or are you just looking at things in this room and you're saying you love it? I tend to like white wines. I think it all depends. I I would say try it. You know, I might be a little bit biased because I I just love Italy so much. I think, but I think their wines are so so freaking good. I think. Get, find you, dude, you can find, you can go to the store and get a $15 bottle of Pinot Grigio tomorrow. Cheap Pinot Grigio. You can get a good Prosecco. Just get some bubbly Prosecco and a Pinot Grigio and you're fine. And then like, just go see what they have. Like, if, you, if you're so scared of spending expensive bottles, find a good Toscana. Chianti should not be that much money. You'll find Chianti, just regular Chianti, for fifteen bucks. Like you don't have to go Chianti Classico. Chianti, come on, it's easy. It's so easy. Just to go find some cheap good stuff, and I think, I think that's a disservice. I think there's so many California wineries that are putting out cheap shit that are shit. It's just. It's it's shit, and it, I I don't know. I just I think there's such good wine out there for cheap. It's I think it's like anything. There's cheap bourbon out there that's shit. I think there's cheap vodka that's shit. There's cheap tequila that's shit. Everything's shit. You gotta find the good stuff. No 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 Cal Cali Drams. I'm not saying Cal. I'm not. You're missing my point. You you should know what I'm saying. Robert Mandavi, like freaking Robert Mandavi, nine dollar bottles of wine versus a Chianti for the same price of nine dollars. There's no comparison. Literally zero. Literally zero. I mean, I'll fight you. I'll fight you right now. There's no way. How's Rocktown's vodka? It's 13 for a handle here. I mean, what is what is cheaper than $13 for a handle? Um, I always compare it. So why I like the Rocktown vodka? Um, so we're, we're this is the this is the alcohol range. We're not um, we're not bourbon range. What's up, bad axe? <laughs> Freaking bourbon. Um, for a handle, for for less price than that, you're looking at like pop off Russian. You're looking at Russian shit. We ain't, we don't support Russia over here. You know they're a bunch of pigs. Like they're our enemies. You know what I'm saying? Like we gotta we gotta fight them indirectly. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure there's some great Russians. I'm sure they're great humans. Um. But technically, they're, they are our enemies. Therefore, you can, instead of buying the $8 Papov, you can buy the $13 Rocktown. And I'm sure they taste the god dang same. Except for the money of this bottle goes to an American company. And the money from this bottle goes to the Russians. You see what I'm saying? Um, how much do you want to fight, fight the, fight our technical enemies? I would, yeah, go ahead and give me a twenty dollar bottle of vodka. Vodka is nothing; it just gets you drunk. So yeah, I'll pay twenty bucks to get drunk. What's Hold on, we got a lot of questions. You guys are, I love this. I love you guys just asking. Like, this is like the alcohol wrench. 
My son is wanting to honeymoon in Italy. Any recommendations? Fly Fisher. Um, it really depends on his style. Um, does he love history? Does he love? Does he want to? Does he want to go on? Like, does he want to spend his honeymoon just going on tour after tour after tour? Or does does he want to chill, drink wine, eat at restaurants? Um, maybe a tour here and there, but then still very chill. It, it I think it all depends. Because if you go to Italy for the first time, I think you definitely got to do some tours. But it's like one second. I think it depends on how much you want to tour. Like, how much do you want to be go, 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 go versus, hey, it's just me and you, babe. Let's go on our own here. There's that. Uh, and my answers are different. I didn't give you an answer, but it really depends. We've been twice. And I feel like that's all I need to know to give you, like, I can I can write you guys an itinerary. I, I just love it there. Um, let's, let's keep answering questions. I was into wine before whiskey. Still love wine. Janelle, this is why we are best friends. Speaking of Italy, baby Bad X just got orders to his first base after he graduates. He's going to Aviano, Italy. So is that a different base? I don't know where... No, that can't be the same base. That's got to be an Air Force base. Because the Army base is called Vicenza. I don't know where they... I don't know where either of them are, to be honest. Um, Duke Miguel says, What's a good bottle of Chianti Classico? I'm going to tell you this right now, Duke. And I'm not even exaggerating. Let me tell you this, and it, and I'm not I'm not even freaking bullcrapping you. Go to the store. I want you to go to the store, and I want you to go to the Chianti section. If you have that, I know some stores don't have a Chianti section. We have a store here that has a Chianti section. Go to the Chianti section. Turn the bottle around, and on the back you'll see the freaking black cock aka the black rooster you'll see a black chicken on the bottle okay i'm telling you dude if you know nothing about wine turn find a 20 dollar bottle 15 dollar bottle whatever you guys have 15 is probably the cheapest we'll find over here if not 20 25 dollars Turn it around, find the black chicken. If it's 20 bucks, just buy it. It's that simple. They're they're good. And if you don't like it, then you just might not like Chianti. I'm telling you. It's um I've had $20 bottle of Chianti. I've had 15. I've had $10 bottle of Chianti that is delicious. And if you don't like it, you just don't like that. Great. That's all there is to it. I don't... You don't need to... This isn't like... I, th I don't think anything's like this. I don't think you need to spend 150 bucks to be like, Oh, well, you haven't had the good stuff. Yeah, shut up, moron. No. It's freaking... Dude, it doesn't have to be that. Freaking 20 bucks is good. So... I can't give you an exact bottle. That's what I'm getting at. Just go there, um, go to your local store, go to the Italy section, whatever you have. And if you want to know what Chianti Classico, I'm not going to break it down, but just know Chianti Classico has a black chicken on it. <laughs> That's your cheat code. 
black cock. Buy one. Find the cheapest one that has a chicken on it. And if, if you really don't want to spend money, find the cheapest one that has a black cock and buy it. And it's there there it's gonna be basically um one second. I've liked all of them. Everyone I've gotten. Do people mostly drink vodka straight or mix it? I I would say majority of human beings drink it mixed. There's definitely people who drink it neat, and I think those are... I don't know, I'd say those are alcoholics, except for I think we're all alcoholics here. I just think that's a different level. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you're such an alcoholic that you don't even want to taste anything, I think it's the next level. <laughs> at least we like... At least we like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least this tastes good. You know, vodka drinkers, I think they're just... I don't know. I think that's a next level, bro. Hey, Trev, what was you and your wife's reason for Italy, if not too personal, says Josh Fritz. So, let me turn this crap down. I'll give you my answer. Because we're going to wrap it up here in a second. I'm freaking starving. Um, So, Josh, we... We just went. So... Last June, we went to Italy. And then, two weeks ago, we went to Italy for our honeymoon. So that just goes to show you how much we loved the first time. So I would say, to figure out why, I would say go back to our first trip. And we were looking at places to go. Like, we wanted to travel somewhere that was different. Um, we're used to going to, like, national parks over here, right? And I don't care. I don't, you know, at New York City, who, wow, look, a big piece of freaking metal. I don't give a flying shit. Um, you go to Italy, though, it's like, oh, Leonardo da Vinci probably jerked off looking at this freaking building. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's unbelievable the culture and the history you see over there. Um, but it, it was kind of a whim. What I would encourage you to do, Josh... And I don't know if you're asking, like, maybe you're just wanting to know what we thought, but maybe you're like, I, maybe I want to go. I would say, start looking up YouTube videos. Um. So we we kind of were like, we're, where do we want to go? And we started looking up YouTube videos, like Italy travel videos. Um, you know, I lived in Germany, so I was like, let's do. Let's look up some uh, Germany travel videos, all of these things. And so we started watching them. And like the more we watched Italy, we we're like, man, that would be so cool. Like for one, like, 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 let's face it, Rome, you got to go there, but it's very touristy. Uh, there's a lot of, I'm coming back. There's a lot of touristy places in Italy that are just, I mean, it's like, it's like going somewhere and it's like going to a theme park in America. It's like, bro, there's like a million freaking people here. This is ridiculous. Like, what are we doing? Um, okay. Something's going on. Hold on. Can, hopefully you can still hear me. Let me unplug this. <clears throat> All right, let's do this. We're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna end this story though. Um, I'm gonna keep doing this till you end the story, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, I think the first time we were there, I I gotta answer this because I think it's I think it's very important. I think. A lot of people want to go to these places, and I think they're scared to, and I think that's wrong. I think just do it. Um, you have the power. It's not as scary as you think. Get a passport and go. That's all there is to it. And figure it out. Look it up. If you have a question, YouTube it. There's a video. 
Like, figure it out. It's easy. Trust me. If we could do it, and trust me, we were freaking, freaking six bottles deep of wine when we figured it out. You can figure it out. Um, I think, I think what resonated with us, it was the mix of history, like, you're getting to see the Colosseum, the freaking Duomo. We went to Venice. We went to Cinque Terre. We went to all these places. We went to freaking Pompeii. You, you go to all these like historical places, and it's like, holy crap, this is like lifetime things. But then it's like, cool, we just saw Pompeii. Let's go eat at this Italian restaurant and drink ten dollar bottle of wine and get drunk. I mean, to me, it was like. It was just the best of both worlds. And it was so good. And this is, here's your thing. Here's your thing. My favorite part about it was that we did that last year. And it, we enjoyed it so much that on our honeymoon, we said, F it, we're going back. And we went back on our honeymoon. So Josh says, I don't really travel due to medical reasons, just interested in your reasons. I would say, without knowing your medical reasons, um, I would say, when we stayed in Rome, we walked about, not far at all, 250 meters from our hotel, and we hit this bridge. And right across from that bridge was a hospital. So if you, I don't know, whatever your medical condition is, you're right there. Um, Florence, very compact city. Um, it, I, I wouldn't say this is a fun story at all, but I do have a video of this. Um, one night, it was about... 9 30 we were walking by the duomo and we saw all these people crowded around and i was like we're drunk as piss so we're like oh let's go look at that there was a lady having a freaking full-blown grand mal seizure on the ground just right there and um this ambulance come flying up they took care of the situation they plopped this tourist right in the ambulance like they got her under control um when she was stable they loaded her up and then i think the hospital in florence was like three minutes up the road like there's no cars there so they just they were there so i don't know i think medical condition wise i, I bring that up because i don't think I think they're good, and I think, for one, if you had an emergency, you're close enough. It's not like going to New York City in Times Square and having a heart attack. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think it's much better. Just difficult to get around. <clears throat> I mean, it depends, again, without knowing too much, um, getting around... Now, here's the thing. Um, I, I say this on twofold. There's a lot of walking um, in Italy. But I will also say, to see everything that we saw in Italy was a lot of walking. I think, though, if you went into this and thought, with the mindset of, I just want to, like, I want to go here and I want to at least see something, you will still see so much more than you'll see in America. Even if you did have some sort of, I can't walk far, I'm in a wheelchair, I'm in whatever, you could still see, I think, so much more cool stuff. I think you could go and eat. Like, you don't even, like, drop you off in Rome and you could get around no matter whatever your condition is. And even if you can't go far, I'm telling you, 
you land yourself in a hotel within a hundred meter freaking circle around your hotel is going to be 12 restaurants that probably is better tasting than any stuff we have around here even if it's not even the best it's still going to be better so i don't i don't see a reason why people wouldn't go i highly recommend everyone to go in in the level of how adventurous do you want to go is how much i'm going to tell you what to do and where to go um but you can you can find good stuff we stayed we stayed kind of in the heart of rome and we could literally i could crawl from my freaking hotel to like six delicious restaurants crawl like on my freaking face crawling i could crawl to a restaurant so i don't care how health how bad you are you could get there you know what i'm saying you could get you could get there so maybe your your trip wouldn't be as you know you're going may you might not be seeing the um the Colosseum, the freaking um, Vatican, the Pantheon. You might not be seeing that all in one day, but you could easily, like, I don't care, care how sick you are, you could totally go up to the Colosseum. And then the next day, you could totally go up to the Vatican. Take a taxi. You could call a taxi, and they will take you anywhere you want. 20 bucks. 10 bucks. Take a bus. The bus is 4 bucks. Like, and the bus will take you anywhere. I'm... They got to figure it out, bro. I would... Josh, dude, just do it. Figure it out. If you want to go, I'm going to... Would never encourage anyone not to go to Italy. And I'm, I'm just speaking big cities. You want to go deep into Italy? I'll let you know. I'll help you out. I know a couple of restaurants. Let's wrap it up. Read my messages, Trev. If a couple of Aussies can find their way around us drunk anyone can travel to the other side but then he says trev's too scared to come down under because of spiders have you seen the spiders down in freaking australia they will freaking kill you hobo spiders freaking Ridgeback? Is that what they're called? Ridgeback? Or something like that? Redback? Redback spiders? God dang it. I know about your spiders, Chris. I've done my research. Uh-oh. I think the camera done. I've never had it overheat like this. Okay, we're back. We're gonna we're gonna end it. The camera's freaking crap in the bed. Everyone. We're wrapping it up. Um Don't tell anyone, but I'm trying to plan a we can we can continue. We're I, I imagine so. Like the whiskey's done for the weekend. We have so much wine that I we're gonna be drinking. So I think we're gonna do. I, I would like to do a, like a Patreon stream where we go through the footage and the photos. That would be fun to talk about. Hopefully we can get Miss Wrench to come into it. Um, but the rest of the weekend. Um, we're going to be drinking wine. We got the Eclipse. 
to do. Um, so we're going to be having a good time. I'm done. No more whiskey for the weekend. I got a lot of wine to drink. I bought so much wine. So, Toby Garmin wrench meet up. You, you trying to come here? Big Vic's about to go live. You about to go live, Big Vic? We'll drop. Let's get a Big Vic's. Um, let's get his live stream in here. If you guys are ready to party, Big Vic about to start. Big Vic, man, Big Vic, you want to party, you go to Big Vic. For the people who are drunk and they're like, I ain't done, Trev. Go to Big Vic, I'm telling you. He got a pub style full of people. Yeah, okay, Big Vic. Yeah, I'm sorry, Trev. Screw you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just screwing with you. Shit, let's do it. I'll be passing through Little Rock in June. Toby! Let's go! Drop them. Um, let's get um. Let me pull up Big Vic's link. I'll drop it. If you guys want to go, you want to keep partying. That's not Big Vic. There we go. Wait, that's not you either. Where the freak is Big Vic? That is not you. You need it, Big Vic. You need to sue this guy. Why is this guy pull? Big Vic's barbecue pops up for this other dude. F this guy. Can someone drop Big Vic? God dang it. Why can't I find it? I'm trying to drop it. That dude is not Big Vic. I got it. Well, you don't have one playing, mother sucker. <laughs> it's not barbecue. No, I did Big Vic's backyard and it popped up another dude. Bourbon Trail Excursion. Who's in? Let's go. We need to... Yeah, I'll do it. That'd be fun. I'll only take you to places... No, I, I take that back. I'll definitely take you to places that suck. We should go to, like, all of them. Jep the Creed. Here, I'll show... I'll share, um... Here we go. Here's Big Vic's channel. Go subscribe to him. He about to go live. And I'm going to tell you, like, multiple people about to freaking pop into his live stream. And they about to drink a lot harder than we do. Dude went, his last live stream, eight hours. Six hours. Four hours. Eight hours. Nine hours. Big Vic, if you go live, don't go live nine hours tonight, bro. <laughs> or do. All right. Cheers, everyone. Let's wrap it up. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for um, the super chats, mega chats, uh, Patreon live, whatever's. Freaking love you guys. Um... Again, be on the lookout. Hopefully, I'll keep you updated um, about the whole...
thing. Um, if we do like a Patreon live stream, so. Um, to see you then, if I see you, go to Big Vic, go to sleep, go to wherever you're going. I love you. Cheers, everyone. I'm gonna go get some food. Really use some Taco Bell right about. You know what I'm saying? Man, I'm hungry. All right, love you. Bye. Good to see you. See ya. Whenever I see you next, mother sucker.